So we'll get started. Um, I'm John. Um, we I was able to do this last year. Warren was unavailable last year, um, but he can participate this year. You may know us from the Slack channel. Warren is very active in the resume channel. Um, I used to be active and I decided that this was more beneficial for me to run the workshops than to try to spend a lot of cycles in there. Um, I was in the army. Um, we're not going to do like whole big long bios, but my background's army, SIGINT. And then since 2010, I've been doing cybersecurity stuff. And most of my expertise is in threat intel. Um, but I've done a lot of different things, mostly in the DOD contracting and intelligence world though. So if you've got questions about like the commercial sector, I'm not your guy. Or do you awesome. want to give like a quick intro? Yeah, absolutely. I was a Navy and SIGINT also, except really not SIGINT. I was the comms guy in the SIGINT community. So cryptologic technician. Um, I got out as an E6 because defense contractors kept pushing these cards with really large numbers in front of me. Uh, so I spent some time and I was in Office of Naval Intelligence in, in D.C. Then I moved uh, away from there. So the last 10 years or so at STRATCOM and Offit Air Force Base here in Omaha. And then the last actual five or six years I've been working commercially. So uh, I'm a I'm a classic IT consultant. I focus on security and privacy. Um, I am a dirty consultant. Uh, my my answer half the day is it depends. Um, I am a governance, risk, and compliance type of guy. I spend a lot of times talking to CISOs and risk officers. So that's my bag. And then I spent about like I spent an hour a day in the VetSec Slack channel trying to help folks out, fix their resumes up, and uh, you know just generally harassing my friends in there. <laughs> Perfect. So we're going to spend maybe like 30 minutes on some slides. And then really the rest of this is interactive. We can take a look at your resume. If you have questions for us, we'll, we can field questions. Um, and really we're here to help more than anything else. So we, we expect to focus on resumes. If you guys have other questions around like resume, job offer, interview, we'll try to handle whatever we can. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully I can change the slides here, please. Is it doing this thing again? Oh, it's doing the thing again. Weird. Okay. So this is sort of our agenda. Um, general resume sort of guidelines roughly, and there are no rules. So like, I want to be very clear about that. Like, I think Warren and I agree on about 80% of resume stuff, which is pretty good because everyone's going to disagree on resumes. Like, you know, I've talked to people who are in the same space giving resume advice, and I might only agree with 50% of the stuff that they tell people. It's just the nature of this. It's, it's your resume. Everybody's going to have their own, you know, guidance to you as well. Um, so this is all the stuff we're going to talk today um, in, in the 25, 35 minutes up front, um, some considerations, the applicant tracking system. Some, some things you might want to do to try to increase your chances of being called back, some things that you should not include on your resume, at least in my opinion. Um, Warren's added some important slides in here about like including your security clearance information. Um, and then we'll take questions as we go on. Like if you have questions, try to post them in there. I'll be trying to keep an eye on the chat as well. And then it'll be very interactive once we get through the slides. And there really aren't 145 slides. If anybody's paying attention, that's a joke. Um, so I'm going to kick things off and then I'll hand it over to you, Warren. So these are general resume problems, some basic guidelines. And I review a lot of resumes as a hiring manager. So I was a hiring manager when I was a federal civilian at the DOD Cybercrime Center, and I have been a hiring manager as a contractor. The number of resumes I get that are five or more pages drives me insane because I don't have that much time to read your resume and no one's reading your whole resume the first time they get it, right? So you have about 30 seconds to a minute to grab my attention. So for junior people, you need one, maybe two pages. And for very experienced pay people, three, three is kind of the max. There's always gonna be an anomaly. If you're applying for a federal job, that's a little bit different and that's, we can have that conversation. Um, I don't think cover letters help you. If they don't need a cover letter, I wouldn't worry about it. Some other important things, there shouldn't be photos on your resume. Your photo on LinkedIn, I think should be a semi-professional or professional 
photo in civilian attire. Um, and then your military resume can't read like your OER or NCOER or whatever other EPR lingo you have. And the number one thing that I see that people struggle with, whether they're veterans or not, is, is the metrics and impact. So when I read your bullet in that 30 to 60, 90 seconds I spent on your resume, especially for your current job, what things did you do? What was your impact? A lot of them read like job postings. So that's some of my initial guidance. Warren, I'll hand it off to you for some commentary. Yeah, absolutely. So agree, all that. Uh, I would emphasize the GS or government space versus a commercial resume. A government wants to know everything you did since you were a Boy Scout in high school and then every collateral duty you did, every every contract you reviewed, they want to know everything. And that one can be 20 pages. It's fine. In fact, they kind of expect it. But if you're not looking for an actual GS federal service type of job, everything John just said, three pages max. Um, I kind of go along some, again, everything you said with respect to there's agreement to a certain extent. Uh, if you work there more than three years, five bullets. If you work there less than three years, two, maybe three strong bullets. Um, and, and to me, a bullet is not just one sentence. A bullet is kind of like a, a two or three, maybe even four sentence description of what you did, how you did it, and what the impact was. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, I would add, and you know, he said no photos on photos are for, for LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, I don't like, uh, you know, in this, in this space, cybersecurity, information security, uh, you know, governance, risk and compliance, those types of roles, you don't normally see a lot of flashy stuff on resumes, right? Um, no color. Uh, so black, black font. Uh, you want a pitch that's some reasonable size, a normal style, right? Something normal. Um, and then the thing that kills me is the fruity bullets, right? And it's the bullets that aren't circles or the bullets that are circles or they're weird carrots or um, they're like, a, they look like a, one of those things you see at the end of a, a musical bar, right? So it's like, uh, it goes back to the ATS, right? The applicant tracking system. We're going to talk about that some more, but all that stuff, it looks aesthetically pleasing sometimes, but you're kind of missing, you're just creating problems for others. Um, and the last thing I was going to say is, you really ought to have a couple of different resumes, depending on what you're applying for, right? If you if you want that commercial pen test job or you want that manager of the SOC job, right? It's going to be a little different on how the depth you go in. Yeah, and if you are applying for federal jobs, that is a different version of your resume, even if you're applying to a DOD contractor. So if you have some 10-page resume because you need to mark I'm an expert in everything in that USA jobs. And you want to prove that with the 10 page resume, that can't be the same resume you send to Lockheed Martin or GDIT. It just can't be. So we're going to talk about that. Um, so real quickly about cover letters, and there's a lot of different opinions on this subject. I don't find them helpful as a hiring manager. I have never read a cover letter that said anything that was important to me that made me change my mind that made me look at a resume sometimes they're required and i understand if they're required you'll need one um i think you'll talk to different recruiters in other spaces that aren't technical recruiters that might have a different opinion right because then you're starting to get into industry specific things but for cyber security jobs my opinion is i would not be spending a lot of time on a cover letter and and the resume format I suggest it probably has that one paragraph in it. So I'm a big fan of a certain style of a resume that really means you don't need this. But Warren, I'd be interested in your thoughts. I agree completely. No cover letters. But something that, that I find is kind of connected to that discussion is thank you letters, right? Uh, you get invited to a team session or a Zoom. You do your interview. Um, you know, there's a couple people involved. Usually it's a, a recruiter uh, and the hiring manager. Maybe it's the hiring manager and then the hiring manager's manager, right? So they are on the invite. It's perfectly acceptable to say, hey, thanks for your time. Um, although if that's all you're doing, then don't bother, right? You want to you wanna leave a memory, uh, maybe something they mentioned during the interview. You went, oh, 
I didn't know what they were talking about. So you looked it up, then you come back and say, hey, I appreciate you sharing with me that 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 technology or that capability. I'd never heard of it. I looked it up and, uh, you know, I found it interesting. And, and this is how I would have applied it in my personal life or in or my professional life. And while some people say, hey, you know, I don't I don't need that. It's it's just it's personal. Right. So if, if you feel like that's something you want to do, it's perfectly acceptable and, and professionally expect not expected, but professionally accepted. Um, I would say that sometimes if you're looking for a position as a hiring manager and, and you have two candidates in mind and one of them, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, you make them an offer and they don't accept it. Well, you're going to go back to the other guy. And it's, if the other guy or gal said something real positive and sounded like, Hey, I don't know what that's about, but I have a high, um, a high aptitude and I'm, I'm interested in, in learning, then it's easy to make them an offer because you've already screened them and interviewed them. So. Yeah. hundred percent agree. Warren. We'll probably get into some more commentary around all of that later. I think. Um, so this is something that Warren already alluded to. So you may need to have different versions of your resume. We're going to talk about that as well. So you may have different versions of your resume, depending on which industry you're applying for. So if you're applying for like, you're a veteran and you're going into DOD contracting, which a lot of us have done, right? We will probably understand more of the acronyms and jargon and lingo than if you also are interested in commercial markets. If you are trying to relocate to the Los Angeles area and like think a startup sounds great, then you're gonna have to really demilitarize the lingo and abbreviations and what you're talking about, right? So I see this all the time. Somebody's like with a CPT, right? They're in a cyber protection team at Cyber Command or something like that. And they think someone understands what their resume means in the commercial world. And I can guarantee you that they don't understand any of the things that you're doing and any of the words that are on your resume explaining what you do in that role. So you really have to go into the resume channel, read all the pin posts, about demilitarizing your resume depending on what industry you're interested in right because because if you if, if you don't have a lot of commercial experience and like some veterans are like i am done with the military i don't want anything to do with the government i want to go into the commercial sector that's cool great but you need to position your resume and practice your interview skills to be successful in that area if you have obscure terminology and military jargon and lingo, then I, then I think that you're doing yourself a disservice, especially if you're going into a very commercial flavor of industry and sector. We also talked about tailoring your resume. So most technical recruiters are gonna tell you the absolute best result is to tailor your resume to one job. That is better advice if you're mid-career and are like targeting a job. Because most of the time you don't have the time to do that for every job you're applying for if you're getting out or you're very active in the marketplace look, applying for a lot of jobs, but you can still tailor it for the type of job. And we'll probably go over some examples of what we mean with that later on, but I think this is pretty important. So I'd, I'd like to get your thoughts on some of this, Warren. Yep. Uh... I, I had I spent about five years working for Tech Systems as a principal consultant to where they hired me out to go do work at a, a utility. But you know, about fifteen percent of my time I spent sitting in a room full of um, fifty recruiters for all different space, uh, AppSec, DevOps, to um, to like front end developers, to back end, to network engineers, to GRC people, um, cybersecurity, ever you name it, Amazon, whatever. So. Uh, what, what they would sometimes do is they would see the resume and be like, Hey, you know, John's an excellent candidate. Uh, he's got all these, all these boxes checked that we really like. Um, but he, but he only has like one bullet and talking about Amazon. So they would reach out to that candidate and say, Hey, can you expand on your Amazon experience? We'd really like to kind of hear about that because we think you're the perfect candidate for this role, you know, at, uh, at, you know, widgets Inc. And so it, it speaks to exactly that. So if you know you're going to apply for a specific sp position or if you're working with a recruiter, your willingness to adjust the aperture that you're kind of aiming at. Man, sometimes you just can't you just can't get them to leave you alone. Uh, hey, I got to call you back later, dude. Bye. Um, sorry. Uh, children. Right. Um, the, the other thing I was going to say 
um, on terminology. I've, I've seen a lot of resumes recently in the VetSec channel that we are, they were Cybercom folks or NSA folks. And, you know, I understand you, you need to write a resume and then you need to get it cleared by, I'm not sure what the name of the organization is, but in my head, it's like the public affairs office of Cybercom to make sure you're not uh, releasing anything that's classified in your resume. But um, like re recruiters and hiring managers on the commercial side, they do not know what defensive cyberspace operations means. So we have to come up with a way to communicate your network defense abilities. Um, also, I saw, uh, I was working with a gentleman. He was a infantryman who was basically responsible for the computer on his Humvee. And he was trying to explain to me that it relied on Linux. And I was like, well, what flavor? And he's like, oh, what's this? I'm like, well, let's talk about that, right? So it's better, instead of saying the, you know, the SATCOM 27 Alpha whiskey, right? Like nobody knows what that is. Tell me, hey, I was responsible for a communications radio that relied on Linux, specifically Ubuntu or Red Hat, right? Um, and I was responsible for, for updating the kernel and I was updating, you know, things like things that are relevant, right? To an employer. So, um, and it seems like the SATCOM guys too, they really struggle to kind of take what they do in the, in the Department of Defense and convert that into uh, a more civilianized language, something that uh, is marketable. Yeah, that's good advice. And we'll probably talk through that in some of our examples I think we're going to get. So Warren, this is your side, slide about clearances, which I really like. So I'll let Absolutely. you address it. All right, cool. So, uh, you know, if you want to, if you have a clearance, first off, and you want to stay in a, in a role or a job that uses the clearance, all I ask is that you list your clearance correctly. Uh, this is the kind of approach that the SSO, uh, you know, your special, I forget what it stands for off the top of my head. I think it's, John, can you help me? SSO, do you know what that stands for? Special Security Officer. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. The Special Security Officer, right? The folks that are handling your clearance and passing your clearance and things like that. This is kind of how they suggest that you state your clearance, right? Without giving away too much data, right? Um, if you want to be in the cleared space, put your clearance. Um, and, it, and it's okay to say I was cleared five years ago and I haven't used it for the last two years. Perfectly acceptable. What it tells me is that if we were to try to reactivate your clearance, it's not going to be that hard. Uh, secondly, um, if there are, and I, I put FSIs, that's the financial services industry, um, the banking industry, uh, mutual funds, they love former military people who have clearances because you're trustworthy, right? Uh, they do an extensive background check. But uh, so I've seen like other people put things like uh, Department of Treasury or IRS style clearance all of those also great things to put on your resume now if you're um you're coming out of the dod and, and like you said you don't want to have anything to do with it anymore and you want to get out of the military industrial base you want to get out of the dib then leave it off and that's gonna that's gonna help the recruiters to the crews are looking for clear people are not going to call you right um they, they might still call you but nonetheless it'll it'll help with you receiving less calls for cleared type opportunities um, the, the kind of thing I do want to make clear here, there's different types of background checks and you can talk about those. You can't say I have an NSA clearance, but you can say I have an SSBI with a counter Intel poly, or, um, you can't say I have an NSA polygraph. I'm sorry, but you can't say I worked at NSA. Right. So like SSO is kind of wonky like that. Um, anyway, that's it. I just, just want to make sure I cover that. Uh, it's, it's important. Uh, people always ask me, where should I stick it? And I, I always say, like, you can say cleared veteran seeks opportunity and put it in your summary. Then you can restate it in your experience and qualification section. I, I, used, I think that it's a probably easy place to put it is with the education and certifications. It's, it's something that's going to pop out at the recruiter. And if that's what they're looking for, you're going to you're going to score. So. Yeah, great advice. I, I just want to reiterate that even if you you haven't used a clearance and you've had a clearance and want to work in that space, the thing I tell people is everyone who has a clearance that wants to work in a cleared field has a job. So the problem is when Lockheed Martin and Boeing and GDIT and Booz Allen want to hire someone, if that role only needs a secret clearance, especially, and you've been cleared before, you're much more likely to be considered because our risk is lower because you had a clearance before. It is really hard and, and there's more risk to hire someone, like if we need a TS or TSSCI and you've never had a clearance, 
it's very rare that someone who's never had a clearance would be offered that role. And the other thing that can happen in the clear jobs is let's say you used to have a secret and it's become inactive. Well, some of these companies will also, also give you a contingent offer. So like if you had a secret clearance and like we just have this rack sitting open and it's a TS clearance and we just haven't been able to hire someone and it's been five months, maybe there is some consideration to take someone who has an expired clearance and give them a contingent offer. That is not outside the, the scope of possible in, in the cleared world. So the ATS, this is an applicant tracking system. If your clearance expired 25 years ago, you could still list it, um, but the relevance is probably somewhat diminished there to some extent. Um, the applicant tracking system is oftentimes characterized as some like AI ML thing. And a lot of times it's a keyword search, keyword matching. So like what can happen is someone at a big firm, right, has a role and they said, we're really looking for people with like these keywords on their resume. And then the recruiter can go in and say, hey, give me the top five or top 10 highest scoring resumes that have applied for this role. And then that's what gets reviewed. I will make these slides available. There's a podcast or an article if you want to read it about all of this. And I thought that was really interesting. So this also comes to tailoring your resume. Tailoring, right? We're not making stuff up. But if you have a lot of experience, you could tailor the resume to try to make sure that you're getting the keywords that are related to the job into the resume, right? Use words from the job rack when it's accurate and truthful to try to score higher on the ATS is one of the things I tell candidates. Um, Warren, I don't know if you have a, a lot more to say about the ATS in particular. I've been on the receiving end, right? So working in a corporate environment where somebody uh, it, it's a meme at this point, but you take your resume and you upload it to the applicant tracking system and then it asks you 25 questions that you just cut and paste from your resume um, and it or read it incorrectly, right? Or it tries to segment the the jobs that you've had and, you know, it's a, it's a pain, right? So it'll be like, hey, John worked at Booz and then he worked in the Navy and then he worked in the Army and then and it's, like, it's like all mixed up. And so it's it's kind of frustrating, but nonetheless, this big ball of document data gets to my inbox in a PDF, so to speak, from the applicant tracking system and says, John Stoner's your qualified applicant. And there's six of these resumes along with it. So you open that up and it just looks like just a bag of hair, right? Or a dumpster fire. I mean, but the data is there, but it's just, it's just, it looks like hell. And then you look at another one and you're like, oh, wow, this individual went through and cut and paste and cut and paste all their data in. So that when I got it in the, after the applicant tracking system looked at it, it was, it was like readable. Um, oh, I, I think that the takeaway here is the applicant tracking systems are going to mash it up and then spit it out on the other end. And you want it to show up in a more readable format for the hiring manager so that they look at the resume and go, hey, I, I want to call this individual. Yeah. All right. So next. So this is a slide that I strongly feel about. I work with Kirsten Renner quite a bit out in the community um, at He Sides, at the Dying Initiative, at other events. Um, and she's at Krenner if you want to follow her. She's one of my top five recruiter, technical recruiter follow, followers. So in resume templates that I recommend, and this is why I have a strong feeling about cover letters, it's because in the template I recommend, there's a paragraph at the top that's brief, a brief paragraph that starts with, I am a blank seeking a blank. I am a cleared 25 year Navy professional who holds a CISSP who is interested in a mid-level role as a SOC tier two or SOC manager. I am not interested in relocation opportunities and would like to stay in the Maryland area. That can be the first line. So that recruiter instantly has a ton of information about you, right? So I am a blank seeking a blank. And that first line of I am a blank seeking a blank can be the first thing you customize on the resumes. I talk to a lot of junior folks who want to do something in cybersecurity and they don't really know what their specialization might be yet. So I'll have conversation. It was like, would you work in a SOC? I'd say, sure. Uh, would you want to do blue team, like cyber defense stuff? And they go, sure. 
So I am a junior or entry level cybersecurity professional with X amount of years of experience or having recently graduated college looking for a role as a SOC analyst. And then that's the resume that I use to apply to SOC roles. And then if I'm also, I would take a job as an entry level pen tester, then I am a blah, 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 looking for a role as an entry level pen tester to further my early cybersecurity career or whatever words work for you. So there's more than one way to do this, but I'm a big fan of if we don't have a cover letter, if that's the advice I tend to give people, then having this short paragraph at the top with this first line being, I'm a blank seeking a blank really helps you understand. And then like, you're like, this is my SOC resume. And this is my GRC resume, especially if you're a bit of a generalist or just getting into cybersecurity and don't know where you want to specialize. Right, like for me, I would have one that's like for cyber threat intelligence sort of technical director roles. Like if I were looking for a job, like I would have that version, but maybe I would also consider, right, like a different type of role. Maybe I'd be like, you know, I'd be interested in trying to become a CISO, right? And then I might have a whole resume that's like, I am a professional with 25 years total of experience with 12 focused in cybersecurity who holds a CISSP in clearance, who's interested in pivoting into the commercial sector into CISO or vCISO roles. And then they understand why I've applied for the job because they might look at my resume and be like, yeah, but he's like a threat Intel person. But that first line has sort of explained how I'm trying to career pivot. You're doing good, John. I was just talking in the chat a little bit. Yeah. Um, the other thing that just happened today, as a matter of fact, is someone did not know Booz Allen Hamilton was the same company as Booz Allen. I interviewed this person today. Um, so do some recon and OSINT on the job you're applying for. Um, you know, you should probably know a little bit about it before you get to that interview so that you could also ask some good questions about that company or the position. So you can do that. Like that's completely allowed. You can find out about the company, the job, what they do. Maybe they just want like a huge new contract. The more prep you can do prior to the interview as well will really help you. Um, and then I'm a big fan of this last bullet, which might make sense. So I'll try to explain it a little bit. Let me tell me if I lose everybody. So if I have a job rec and the job rec says, we are looking for a threat intelligence professional who is familiar with Bianco's pyramid of pain, the diamond model and MITRE attack. And I'm like, yeah, I know all of that. I could put a bullet on my resume that says, I am a cyber threat intelligence professional that is familiar with blank, blank, and blank. Cause that's an exact match. That phrase is exact what they're looking for, right? Copy and paste because two things, two things. This is why I say this one, if they're using a keyword ATS, I'm hundred percent match for that phrase because I don't know how they put it into the system. Right. And then two, if the hiring manager reads my resume and if the hiring manager wrote the rack, that's, those are that person's words. So hopefully it resonates even more because I've taken what they've written, if it's applicable and true, and just use that instead of me using my own words. This takes time to do, but these are little tips and tricks. If you're not having success or you're finding this really difficult, that might help you. Um, I think Warren, you were talking about a summary as well. Some other options there for the top part. Yep. I was going to, I was going to add on to, you know, social engineering, the recruiting and hiring manager um, for sure. On the hiring manager, I look them up on LinkedIn. I look them up on Facebook. I Google the heck out of them. Uh, I try to find anything that I can use to my advantage. Uh, it's not cheating to, to use the internet. Right. So I happen to know John has a, a small, tiny passion for soccer, similar to me. I, you know, I'm wearing a sporting KC shirt. If, if I could, if I know that he's my hiring manager and uh, I'm an Arsenal fan and I think he's a Liverpool fan, if I remembered correctly, uh, and he's broken and I hate him for it. But if I can slip in there, you know, uh, whenever, whenever I'm not studying my CISSP and, and working on, on getting the, learning the logs and sim better, you know, uh, I wake up early on Saturday mornings and make sure I catch a premier league game. And then we just kind of move on. Right. And then, you know, John's thinking to himself, like, 
well, you know, I, I talked to three candidates today, but I think I relate best to the guy who was talking about the English Premier League, right? Go ahead, John. Yeah. Let, let me, so this is funny because I'm doing a hacker interview seminar with the Diana Initiative next month, by the way, if anybody's interested in that, it's going to be free and online because we talk about what's the point of the interview from the candidate's perspective and what's the point of the interview from the hiring manager's perspective. And I think people are going to hate me when I say this, but as a hiring manager, I want to like the candidate. I need them to be able to do the job. I need them to be able to do the job, but for me to extend an offer is I want to have some kind of connection. I want to feel like that person will be a good person on my team, that, that we had some kind of a connection. This is not cheating. This is how it works. I also, as a hiring manager, try to make sure I am keeping in mind that I want a very diverse team, but I still want to connect with the people that I extend an offer to. Right. I want to feel like they were very affable, like we got along. Right. And that sometimes is like from the candidate's perspective, I think you need to understand from the hiring manager's perspective, like we want you to be personable. I kind of want to get to know you a little bit. So, yeah, if you talk about like you're an Arsenal fan and you're like, yeah, I saw that you gave some talk, uh, you know, about soccer and cybersecurity. And that was pretty cool. Like you have just gone up the scale also in terms of me remembering you as a candidate and me can, and me finding that I would have a connection with you if you went out of your way to do that ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, another, another key. I mean, it's absolutely, it's absolutely critical, right? Like this right here, if you look, that's a conversation starter. Like I cannot tell you how many times that this flag from I bag from Iraq has started a conversation. Like, did you serve? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Um, I sent a bunch of Girl Scout cookies to a guy uh, who was serving and he, he sent me that. Right. And they're like, oh, and they, I mean, but like immediately or if, you, if you're talking and someone's like, you know what we need to do? We need to do this. You're like, uh oh, knife hands, this Marine. He's got to be a Marine. Right. Uh, so like having that ability to kind of pull in that, hey, I'm a veteran into the conversation in some way. If your resume hasn't already like ridiculously stated that fact, trying to trying to acknowledge their service is always going to give you a leg up as well. All right. We're going to keep, we're going to keep going because we're already going longer for this portion. So Warren, you're up. Oh yeah. So we, John spoke earlier about, they spend about 30 seconds on your resume. I think he was being kind, uh, you know, recruiters. They're in a large room. Like you see in the picture there. Uh, I've worked in one of these rooms. It is just like five, five desks backed up to five desks. It looks like something you might see, on the Wolf of Wall Street, except for recruiters, right? Uh, Pre-pandemic, of course. Um, but you know, they're all they're all very beautiful people. Uh, I say they're beautiful people because uh, they're they're marketing types, right? They're trying to they're trying to get uh, affectionately. I say this nerds like us on the phone and put us in jobs, right? They're getting paid 15, 25, 35 percent of our salaries to place us, so it's a very lucrative role. I've, I've worked with some recruiters that are making four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year just putting me and my friends to work. So um, some things I wanted to share is that they're um, they don't know IT, right? They don't know uh, OSPF from BGP and, you know, that or or um, the Apollo isn't a router or they know it is sometimes. Right. So they're, they're trying to learn IT. All they know is I've got a rec as a network engineer and he's got to have a clearance. And so I'm trying to call every network engineer. It says Cisco and his, every person at Cisco in his resume has a clearance. I'm going to call them on the phone and talk to them. Or they're going to look through their database and go, oh, boom, sec plus, got it. 8570, yeah, or whatever the number is these days. I forgot what it is. But they're going to they're gonna look for that, and they're going to be like, okay, he's got it, or he doesn't have it, and, psh, and move on. So I put this other, this other slide here. They did some analysis of what a recruiter's doing when they look at your resume, and that's where their eyes, the heat map, their eyes are going, right? So – they look at your name, they look at your clearance, they look at your degree, then they kind of bounce up and look at some maybe like, where do you work? They look at something else and then boom, they're done. I mean, they're done. Uh, and having, again, been on that side of the fence, I can tell somebody in about 15 seconds whether or not I like the resume and whether or not I even want to interview them. I, I, it's, 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 not a, it's not a humble brag. It's just you get used to seeing stuff and you're like, nah, I saw a typo in the first sentence. Just throw it away. Yep. I agree. Um, typos, 
I've seen resumes that had three different fonts. I mean, this is this is a field, threat intel specifically, but cybersecurity, attention to detail, right? How many times have we heard that in the military? Attention to detail. I've seen resumes that don't have your contact information on it. Not, not sure how to do that. Um, I also am a big advocate of putting at least the town and state where you live, even if you are open to relocation, because you can say open to relocation, but you want to make the job easier for the recruiter, right? If the recruiter needs people on the ground in person in Pensacola, Florida, and I don't know where you live, you, I, then I have to look, is it on LinkedIn? Is it easy? You want to make the job easy for the recruiter So keep that in mind. I know people have difference of opinions on the location, but I always come back to, I wanna try and keep things simple for the recruiter. All right, there are no rules, because even Warren and I don't agree on everything. There are no rules. These are our opinions. And we all, someone in the chat disagreed about how we thought about cover letters, which is fine. People are gonna have different opinions. There are some things you need to stop including on your resume. And I'm telling you right now, you need to stop including it on your resume, okay? One, you're trying to put too much on your resume. That pretty much applies for everyone. I am a victim of this as well. I have a three page resume that I could make two pages and I'm bad at following my own advice. People wanna to put too much stuff on their resume. I highly recommend that if it's not related to the job and it's potentially related to politics or religion, you take it off. If you're applying to be the CISO of the Archdiocese of the Catholic Church in Michigan, cool, then leave it on because now it's applicable, right? Now it makes sense that you would wanna know that. You don't want to disqualify yourself because the hiring manager can make decisions which they shouldn't maybe be making, but if you put this stuff on the resume, it could disqualify you. Whether that's illegal or not, it could disqualify you, okay? Yes, Jeff is oftentimes disappointed. All right, I had a big row two years ago with somebody in VetSec that insisted that their sniper training needed to be on the resume. I remember that. <laughs> Veterans already face some biases in the civilian world because we served. One of the things like that people already think is like, you know, one of the things like, oh, I wonder if that guy was in the army. I wonder if he killed anyone. Like that is literally a thing people think when they hear you're a veteran, especially if they could be like, oh, I wonder if they like were in the war or whatever. So like, I don't need to further exacerbate that thought by pointing out the fact that, you know, that person was a sniper because that generally means that you were trained to kill people, okay? And there's lots of other things people put on the resume that is like very specific to the training and they'll list like all their military training and anybody that was a veteran knows that it's irrelevant. And anybody that's not a veteran doesn't know why you listed it. So like, I don't care about your combat lifesaver training. Like, unless you're applying for a job at the firefighter academy or something, it's not relevant. So awesome. Uh, I, 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 I want to answer Forrest's comment first, and then I'm going to come back to what you said, John. Uh, here's why I like volunteer information. Um, it's, it's where you get to kind of be you, but you got to be careful, right? You don't want to put any of that controversial shit that he was talking about. Right. So what's, what's really positive. I'm a member of Christ the King and I volunteer at the pancake fest every year. There's hundreds of kids there. They're disabled. It's wonderful. Right. I'm a Shriner. I go and I donate money to welfare of, of impoverished children. Um, all good stuff, right? Not bad stuff. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't matter what religion the other person on the other end is. That's just positive, good behavior in your community. Um, volunteer, like I, I have a bullet on my resume. It talks about my role at VetSec, right? Um, it's it's partially because it's an important cause to me. And it's it shows that I'm a part of my community. Um, and, and not just the community I live, but the community of cyber professionals, former veterans. Um uh, one of the other things, I, uh, some people did some volunteer work at their church that was cybersecurity related, right? Like they uh, they they updated the LAN, um, they they pulled out uh, some old routers, they put a firewall in, right? It's anything, uh, anything cybersecurity related. Uh, if you did it for volunteer because you just you wanted to help, then put that on your resume. 
And and the, the, the secondary reason is if the person reading your resume is like, you're a member at the Christ the King. I'm a member at uh, St. Paul's down the road. And, uh, you know, we did the 5K against you guys every year, right? Or I think we played doing softball. I mean, so it's it's another, uh, uh, you're trying to make connections. You're trying to make that relatability. Um, I, I even think, you know, if uh, I'm, um, if you're like a mentor for a fraternity or a sorority, right, as an adult mentor, um, if you're a coach of a soccer team, right, even it, you have to be careful again that it's not self-serving. Like I coached my kids softball team, or pardon me, soccer teams, but that was self-serving. So it wasn't exactly volunteering. Um, let's see. I hope I hope I answered your question there for us. So and, and again, there's no there's no rules, right? So like I have the fact that I'm a volunteer soccer coach on there, but I also craft a story around the fact that the hardest certification I ever had to get was the US soccer certification, not any of the cybersecurity crap. Right, because that was man, the soccer, whoo, man, uh, U.S. soccer is messed up. Um, so, but like, I have to, I kind of have a story around that, and like, yeah, if you volunteer and it's important to you, like, you can include it. But I just want to be clear that if things are related to politics or religion in some way, like, you probably have been screened by someone who took that into account. Like, it's just the fact that people have biases. So generally what I'm trying to say is you want to remove things so that people don't decide to not even call you about a job because of something, because they think in their mind, oh, that's someone I may not like, or maybe I disagree with them in some way. And now you won't get that job. And unfortunately, I think that that can be true in some cases. I will give you a very good um, example. I have a friend who is a two-time kidney transplant survivor and his resume included that fact on it and it included the fact that he was also involved in a lot of like medical volunteering things and i told him you really need to take off the fact that you are a kidney transplant survivor because i think it's the reason you're not getting job offers and he took it off and he now works in cybersecurity. Right, because if someone reads that resume, they are making some assumptions about the health of that individual, and I don't think it was doing him any favors. And we still kept all the volunteer stuff he did for the healthcare community and healthcare advocates and patient advocates, because that all sounds fantastic, without knowing his medical history. So that's not going to come across in the interview. They're not going to see that. Just as another like pointed example of some things that you want to like be careful of. Uh, I have two questions. I have two comments. Uh, one, um, I've had to coach some people that I live in Omaha, Nebraska. It's the middle of the United States. It's like 85% white. Those are just facts. And if an individual has a crazy difficult foreign name that maybe they want to ease up on that, and go with something shortened so they'll stop getting screened by people that maybe aren't the best people on the planet, right? Who don't see that, you know, we're all the color green. It is unfortunate. I agree. But uh, once we did a little bit of changing and of um, the profiling, he started getting interviews. So um, secondly, uh, John, you, you got the green, your damn face. Can you, can you explain to me what you're trying to say there? Is it just a picture on the resume? Don't put your picture on your resume. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, but we do want our picture. I, I would say so. Just conversely, I I don't want to see it on your resume, but I want to go and I want to find John Stoner and I want to see his face on LinkedIn because if I don't see his face on LinkedIn, then I think he's a fake candidate that uh, I don't know. I I, I feel like yeah. I just I lose. There's like there's like some level of professionalism that I'm kind of expecting, and it could be a completely AI generated picture, right? And but I I'm more interested in interviewing him if I see a face than if I don't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me, where are we at? Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. It's being weird with me today on how I need to. Uh, well, you got that up. giant toilet paper roll wrapped around your pinky there. Yeah, that's so. not helping. No. Um, I think we've covered this a lot to some extent. If you are a veteran, like, and you want to list like medals and stuff, then like, I mean, like if you got a bronze star, great because now i under, i know what that means 
But uh, even I had this problem when I got out of the military because I didn't have a lot of mentorship around my resume. Like, does this help? Does, does some of this help? So we have too many acronyms. You need to spell out the acronyms. Again, if you're applying to like Lockheed Martin and like it's the rec itself has acronyms in it and you're like, oh yeah, I worked on the F-35. It's an F-35 program, right? Okay, they're, they're gonna understand that. If you worked on the F-35 and you wanna go to like a startup in Nebraska who's doing cloud engineering, you're gonna need to spell out the acronyms. Direct reports, what did you do? Now I'll spend a few seconds on this. Like I led, I supervised, I was responsible for, those are the impactful statements, right? Those are the impactful statements. I was responsible for 25 other personnel to do X, Y, and Z. And we had a budget of X amount of dollars. Like that's a good, like, I don't know. You don't like that Warren. This is the one area where we may disagree a little bit. Okay. Here, here's my beef. Um, that's not a bad start to a bullet that is three to four sentences long. I struggle because occasionally I, I get a resume of a retired individual who's, you know, maybe they're an E8 or E9 or they were an O5 or an O6, right? And OPRs and EPRs all say responsible for 67 souls, $250 million, such and such project, right? And that's it. That's the bullet. And, and I'm like, well, okay. So, okay, Lieutenant Colonel Warren, um, there was a Lieutenant Colonel Billy and a Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy and a Lieutenant Colonel Dean all before you. They were all responsible for the same 67 souls and that same $250 million project, right? What did you do better, different, what, anything like, like, did you, did you increase the budget? Did you, did you spend it more, more appropriately? Did you, uh, identify fraud, waste, and abuse. Did, like, like I want to know something. I just so like I I disagree a tiny bit only because I think that that responsible for ends up missing the effect that I'm hoping for. Yeah, and and maybe that wasn't a great example. I talked to a lot of junior folks as well who like work in a sock, and so like we pull out what they do because their bullets read like the job description. Yeah. So like I'm a SOC two tier analyst and on a day to day basis, I'm responsible for tier one and tier two tickets and review approximately 75 tickets a week with a closure rate of 85% for the first quarter. Right. And you can really get into the weeds on this. The other thing that you made me think about Warren is I gave a presentation yesterday to my IC squared chapter. And we talked about the fact I had just um, rejected a resume for a pretty senior naval officer because it was for a very hands-on role. And his resume was exactly what you just stated, right? It was an, an NC, it was an OER, a Navy OER resume of I am responsible for this and this and this. And the role I'm hiring for is very technical and very hands-on. So there's a whole nother discussion we could have maybe later about like, when you're getting out of the military, like what what kind of a role do you want, right? Because there are some officers or senior enlisted who end up in a management position, right? Because that's how it works, but then want to be hands-on, but haven't really done anything to demonstrate that they're still technically proficient or competent. Or if they are, I can't tell that on the resume. Sounds good. Do we have any, okay. any questions there? I'm trying to trying to kind of discern. Yeah, like yeah, Forrest. I think your comment there is like nobody knew what that meant, and that's correct. I see a lot of that too, where somebody lifts like their their MOS or AFSC, and like I don't even know what it what the like, AF. They're like, oh, I'm a blah 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, I don't know what a blah, blah, you know, 32 a Tango Whiskey Foxtrot 2-1 is. Like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, Warren froze. We'll get him back in a minute. Um, yeah, so again, that's another example. Like, I don't know what that is. Like, even if it's a cyber MOS, like, I don't know what the MOSs are anymore. I haven't been in the military for like 12 years. So I don't know, you know, did 35 Novembers become something else? Um, so a couple other things here. You want to have other people look at your resume? 
right? Have other people look at your resume, proofreading, typos, grammatical errors, font mismatches. Please have someone look at your resume before you send it out. You do not want stupid typos. You want to make sure people know how to contact you. Your email and phone number should be on your resume. I have literally gotten resumes before and I did not know how to contact the person. It wasn't on their resume. Um, and and I, um, if you're here and you're not already in VetSec, come to VetSec, join the Slack. It's free. And people like Warren, and there's a whole bunch of other folks who are active all the time in their peer mentoring reviews. We have a bunch of pin posts that have links to all the resources. And then there's some some really crazy things too, like what's your what's your email that you're using? Like if you're applying for a cybersecurity position with me and you have like a Yahoo or AOL email, I make some assumptions. I have biases, right? Like it may not be right or wrong. That might not be the decision to hire or not hire you. But when I see your email is like some, it's not first name, last name at Gmail or at Microsoft or whatever. Um, you know, I tell people like, I, I tell them like, if you want to be a red teamer, go get a proton email and then like make a proton email account, because I think that tells you that, you know, a little bit more than maybe the person who's like using an AOL email. Oh, that's so funny, Brandon. Oh my God. We, that was like in sync. That's hilarious. Okay. There's nothing wrong with Yahoo, but I'm just saying. I may, I have biases too. At least I try to know what some of them are. I'm just saying. Um, so hopefully we, hopefully we'll get him back. Okay. Your resume can't get you a job. Let me say that one more time. Your resume doesn't get you the job. So many resumes read like novels and they're too long and there's too many details. Your resume gets you the interview. The interview gets you the job. So like, stop trying to write a novel, stop trying to make it 10 fonts. So you can get it down to two pages. So you can include every little thing you did. What really matters is like your summary, your education, training, certifications, whatever you think is important. It's applicable. Your current job, the job before that. That's the most important part of your resume because the resume determines if we get a phone call, the recruiter calls you, sees if you can, you know, speak, you know, and then lines you up with the interview. And then the interview gets you the job offer. Um, if you are a student and you're using an EDU, I think it's fine. I don't care. That's totally fine with me. Um, but yeah, I, again, it's just a bias. It doesn't mean I'm not going to interview you if you're using Yahoo, but it does mean something different when I see someone who has a Proton email. It just means something different to me. What does it mean? They're a little extra technical maybe? Or they're a right. paranoid nerd and they're your people? Right. That's it. It doesn't mean I'm not going to interview the person with a Yahoo. I just, in my mind, make some assumptions. Now I know I have those assumptions, so I try to be mindful of that, but it, I think it generally means something if someone has a Yahoo versus a Proton email. Fair enough. Uh, I apologize. I had a, I literally just had a crash. So uh, I, I hope I wasn't saying something crazy or I hope my face was frozen in a funny way. Uh, bullet number three, practice your interview skills, John. Uh, how, we, we all have, um, some people have good interviewing skills. Some people have terrible interviewing skills. Some people have a programmatic uh, interviewing process, right? Like I, I work for a consulting firm. We want to we want to try to make the interviews for the same level of people as similar as possible. So we have an interview bank of questions that we're supposed to kind of work through. Um, I would say we work through about half of them, and then the interview kind of takes its own um, unique journey, so to speak, right? Uh, how do you answer the ridiculous question of what's your biggest weakness? My biggest weakness is I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up, Warren. So I've done a lot of different things in cybersecurity the last 12 years, et cetera, et cetera. I just made that up. But I would absolutely practice that question. And I was practicing it two years ago when I was looking for another job. 
Yep. So uh, I, I, I have had experiences where I feel like as the interviewee, I was carrying the, the role of responsibility to have a conversation. Uh, I ended up saying, you know, I decided like, hey, you guys can't send someone to the interview that wants to interview me and take it seriously. I don't think I want to work with this group, right? But um, I think that you, you do really need to have somebody who you trust and you can maybe role play with just run you through random good and bad questions. That, yep. That's all. I, just, I, I think yep. that's a great bullet. You, you practicing this. Yep. Some people, you know, they're, I, I think I'm probably one of them. Uh, my, my oldest son is probably another one. We're just kind of full of shit, right? We could, we could talk to a rock and uh, you know, make people, make people like it. And some people don't have that ability. They really do you just need to practice. And sometimes it's getting the, the rhythm of responding on camera to somebody uh, right. who you don't know and getting comfortable in your own skin. Right. Yep. And you just, you just got to practice. And especially if you are nervous, especially if you are introverted, it will be helpful for you to practice some of the things you want to come out in the interview, not memorize, but practice, like practice your, Hey, Warren, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started? That's how most interviews should kind of start in a lot of cases. They don't always, because not all people who are doing the interview are good, but like that should come up. You probably will get that question around strength and weakness, which is a terrible question, which I don't ask anymore. Um, but you get it because terrible. people think they want to hear it, but it's not a great question. I was in an interview for a senior threat intel role, and they started asking me what ports were for what. And I was like, are you even serious right now? Like, I have Google. Like, this ain't sec plus. Like, I don't like, I mean, sure, 443, I kind of know. But like, if you expect me to like memorize all these ports, like, eh. and I kind of, right. But I also wasn't prepared, but I kind of went back to them. I was like, this is why we have Google. And this is why I have cheat sheets on my desk. So like, was that the right answer? I don't know. But like, I don't memorize ports very well. Yeah, I, I think there's there's people that I call it stump the chump, right? There's people who are playing stump the chump and, you know, they're highly technical. And um, I remember being asked, do you know what UBA is? And uh, I said, no, I don't. Can you describe it for me? And he goes, oh, it's it's user, be and he, you know, a little bit smug. Uh, it's user behavior analytics. I'm like, oh, like heuristics, like learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm familiar with the concept. I'm sorry. I, I'm not familiar with that tool. No, I've never touched it, right? Uh, I, I ended up getting a follow-on interview at the next level because I wasn't bullshitting the in, interviewer, right? Um, so I, I think that's just another area to be – if you don't know the answer, you don't know the answer. <laughs> don't, don't try to BS the interviewer because they're definitely looking for something. Yeah. Yeah, Cassandra, I think you can practice with someone that you trust. If you don't have someone, you can practice with yourself and a camera and maybe record it on your own system so you can see – are you maintaining eye contact? Um, a lot of the interviews are still virtual right now. So if you aren't doing a lot of virtual presentations or interviews, you know, you can practice that way. Um, In-person interviews are, haven't changed a whole lot. I would bring a copy of your resume. I would always have a copy of your resume handy, um, especially if you get a question about something on your resume, you can have it in front of you. Um, I think it's great to have your resume on a USB. Uh, that's, I'm just kidding. Uh, here, put this in your, in your computer. Um, did, did I crash again? No, 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 you're oh, good. I was okay. reading Jason's You were super comment. still there for a moment. I thought I crashed again. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I'm interested in, uh, kind of hearing more about what happened there, Jason. Uh, uh, that sounds awful. A random employee. Um, yeah, I'm confused by what you mean. Jason, do you want to come on the stream real quick before we take a break? I want to hear this story. Um, Sam, I don't think we do do mock interviews per se. Um, we do have the mentor. There are some people that volunteer to be mentors. Maybe yeah. if uh, I, I don't know much about that. I haven't volunteered to be a mentor. Um, but I do know that there's like kind of like a pairing up situation where we can connect you with someone who is willing to mentor you and kind of work you through that process. 
yeah, let me go back. VetSec. I'm so oh. sorry. Within the Slack channel. Yeah, yeah. In in VetSec, you can ask to be a mentor. And if you put you can put the purpose in there. So if you say I'm interested in getting some practice interviews, then we'll try to, you know, make sure someone who does an interview is paired up with you. I'm in that channel. I've done a, a couple things. Um yeah, for San, for uh, Jason though, like if you get someone in there and like they're, I guess the first question is like, are you the hiring manager? And like that may help. That sounds like not a great situation. And like there's all kinds of like red flags with this situation in general. But like if you're carrying the interview as the candidate, I mean that tells you a whole lot. I think about that process, and I would be very careful about that organization. Um, but yeah, that's weird. I, I haven't experienced that a ton. I have experienced what Warren has experienced where the candidate is either very nervous or gives very short answers and it's not very conversational. Um, I think most of the time it's because the person is very nervous and hasn't practiced uh, is the feeling I get. Yep. Okay, so I think we're gonna take like five minutes just uh, if Warren needs it, I'm gonna get another like Gatorade real quick so we'll take five minutes, but if you want to have your resume reviewed, I suggest you take off any PII you don't want public. If you don't want your phone number, if your address is on there, strip that out. Um, if you're in the Discord, we can take it through the Discord is probably the easiest way. There's a workshop resume channel in the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, I can give people my email that's going to work faster. But give me just a couple minutes. I'll be right back. Um, and then Warren, if you need a break, we, yeah, we I'm going to go grab minutes. a drink in the restroom real quick. All right. Give us like five minutes and then we'll get started with the next portion. All right. Perfect timing. I am going to, uh, put the link to the slides in here for just a second. So give me a minute. So I want to do that before I forget. Hey, John, I'm not on the Discord channel. Will I still be able to participate? Are you going to um, like bring that in, or what are you going to do? Yeah, I'm just going to um, share. Yeah, I can bring it on screen then. That is not the right thing. Hold on one sec. Please copy. So I, I see that, oh, yeah, I see the link, thanks. I see that um, uh, Steven Sedato, uh, known as S. Dot, is in the, in the, in the room. Um, he's somebody whose resume that I've, I've helped work on. Uh, and a fellow, uh, what does he call me, a GRC trap lord. So uh, I just want to give him a shout out because uh, I, enjoy, I, enjoy nice. I enjoy talking to that guy. All right, we got one resume that I'm going to bring up. Anybody know Jake Knowlton? I helped that guy get a job and I fixed his resume. Good old Jake. Another uh, fellow Omaha guy. Nice. Okay. All right, so we are sharing this first one here. Brave soul. Thank you for contributing. Okay, so John, I'm still seeing the the presentation with the uh, the surprise kid meme. All right, I think I am sharing a different screen. So, can anyone else see the Word document, or is that a Warren thing? I don't know. Warren, you're still seeing that. Okay. So, Forrest sees the Word doc. Okay. Warren, I don't know if you want to. It seems like it's on your end. All right, let me let me, let me jump out, and jump in. Okay. All right, it's good now. Yep. All right, cool. So the first thing, my first suggestion is, I, as I kind of look at this, is that this is the professional summary is pretty good. The first thing I would go back to is the thing we talked about earlier is you have, I am a blank, right? And it's a very long, I am a blank, but I, 
information technology professional. Also, I'm not sure that that's a sentence. I am an information technology professional. Okay. I am a whatever that is. Looking for a role as a, right? So if I got this resume where I work, we also don't only consider you for one job. So like where I work, we tell everyone, and it's the truth, we hire you for a career. We're a really large firm. We've got lots of jobs in cybersecurity and IT, right? So I am, I am a blah, 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 who is looking for roles. So if you want to have one resume that you send to multiple roles and you don't want to customize it all the time, you could say, I'm a blank, interested in a blank, blank, blank. I am interested in roles such as SOC tier, SOC manager, maybe for this person, technical director, or another supervisor position where I can both supervise personnel and have hands-on keyboard activity or like however you want to word it. Because I don't know what you're looking for. Now, obviously you've applied to a specific job, right? But just as I get to know you, right, I only have this document. So that's why I'm a big proponent of I'm a blank looking for a blank. Well, I don't know if you have some initial comments on this top part here. Yeah. So I'm struggling with like uh, adeptly managed 30 plus that supported an organization of 1500. That's a bullet that belongs down the experience section. All that stuff about ESX. Um, VMware, all that bullet section. Like he's doing great up till the adeptly managed. Just move that to a bullet, and and the it's it's pretty good. I think all of those are bullets, and they're the start of bullets. Good ones. They, uh, I agree that those could be bullets because you want this summary. It's almost like your little like bio, right? It's why I don't think you need a cover letter, right? So like. I'm an information technology professional, an army veteran with 19 years of experience in blah, blah, blah. Most recently, I've enjoyed roles where I was able to do X, Y, and Z. As I transition out of the military, I am looking for roles in these areas. I am open to relocation. I'm not open to relocation. That's all the kind of stuff I'd put up here in the summary. So like, are you getting out of the military? Right? Like, I mean, I'm making some assumptions because I don't really know the situation. But like, I agree. And then like the possesses a top secret clearance, go back to the bullets in the slide that we linked about how to like, can you tell me the date of when it was like last investigated when your investigation date was like Warren has all of that in that slide around security clearances. Um, next thing I see that uh, I think everybody knows CISSP and CompTIA, that's great. I'm not sure why it says CompTIA twice. Um, I, I am a fan of assuming the, the, assuming the best in people, right? Um, if you're going to put your clear, pardon me, not your clearance, if you're going to put your certification up on your resume, you have it, you're active, you're in good standing, right? So I just leave out the, the expired. I would actually like to see it. I would prefer to see a, a progression of increasing difficulty or just expanded, um, knowledge, right? So I would like to see it in reverse chronological. So um, if let's say you got A plus back, you know, 10 years ago, then you got net plus and you got security plus. That's fantastic. I love that. And it shows that you're getting better and better. And then you got the CISSP. Um, I, I like that. And then, you know what? Hey, you got a cloud plus cert after that, right? Well, that's going to be something you did more recently than you did your CISSP. I like to see that reverse chronology and just, it shows me that you're continuing to improve yourself, right? So I, I like the dates, but again, like we don't agree on everything. It, it's, that's just like a personal preference more than anything else. For sure. Please don't list certifications you do not have. Uh -oh. I am also not a fan. If you are close to getting your degree, I think it's okay to say anticipated degree date, blah, blah, blah. I don't recommend people anticipate dates <coughs> of certs either so while we're in that section yeah I, I i actually recommend that if if you're working on a degree i love it i want to hear about that i think you should put it on your resume uh, i also want to know how far along you are if you're 
I always say, you know, Warren's working on his proctology degree. Uh, I'll have a doctorate in 2031, right? Um, that statement is is like doubly full of shit, right? It's a lie. Uh, I'm not working on that, but I could put it on my resume if I wanted. Uh, so I think that when people do that, they're lying. So I always say, tell me, I have achieved 100 of 120 credits at, on my, <clears throat> excuse me, on my degree at Western Governors University, expected graduation fall 2023. That's, that's perfectly acceptable to me, right? That, that tells me a very factual statement about the status of your degree. Ooh, I see some good questions popping up. I'm going to tackle yeah. the ageism one. Um, okay. One of the one of the recommendations that I've made to some peers, I'm 47, right? So uh, the ageism thing is starting to become an, an issue for me <coughs> if I don't apply correctly for certain positions. Uh they, they don't want to pay me what I feel like I'm probably deserving uh, unless I take a very high level executive role. So um, I like to say, go back 10 years on your resume. If you go back 30 years back to 1993, when I first joined the Navy, like that's, that's saying I'm old as hell. And um, I don't want to be discriminated on that basis. So I, I always tell people go back 10 years, right? If we go back more than that. The kind of experience is somewhat irrelevant for the position you're probably applying for today. Um, so I hope, I hope that answered the yeah. question. If it didn't, you know, ask some more. Yeah. So um, on this point as well, all things you don't have to include, it's not a bibliography, right? So if you are to the point where only the last 10 years really matters, then only list the last 10 years and it doesn't matter. Now in the, if you get the job, you might have to like fill out like Booz Allen required me to fill out like every job I've ever had because their background investigations like very intense, right? So like they actually made sure I had a resume that listed every position because I've excluded a position that I only had for like two months. And they said, we need your resume to include every position. So there's always gonna be like weird circumstances, fine. But, but that didn't exclude me having the interview because all this does is get you the interview. Um, as we move down here, we've got a bunch in the queue, so I don't want to spend like 30 minutes on just this one. This first bullet, John's recommendation on bullets like this, and I, I will be interested to hear Warren's take. I like your first bullet to explain to me what you do as a senior information technology manager. This bullet doesn't do it for me. Like as a senior information technology manager, I do x y and z things or i am responsible for x y and z things and people like i just i don't know what that is and like so you manage 10 information management office professionals i don't know why they're capitalized a lot of people in the military including me capitalize random words and then provided information system services to 150 employees those are two completely unrelated things i think as well so like as a senior information technology manager, I managed 10 employees who were providing services to over 150 employees in the tier two, tier one help desk. Like, I don't know, like Warren thoughts on that. Uh, I agree with what you said. I want, I feel like it's lacking. I'm having a, a issue with the fact that um, like, I just, yeah, it's what you said. I, I'm having, I was getting ready to say, I thought it said information security manager, but it says IT manager. So help desk, managing help desk makes sense. Um, I, I, it goes back to something I said earlier about anybody can be a manager. Anybody can have been in charge and, and you know, managed $250 million and 25 people, but did they do any good, right? Were they any good at that job? And this kind of lacks that. Um, I, I would have loved to have seen, you know, zero turnover, right? Um, the improved training, uh, um, increase the budget. Like what did you, what is your kind of huge largest takeaway? Uh, one of the things I also see, um, you've only been in that job for two years, if the date's accurate, right? And you've got five bullets, Are, which is the strongest of the bullets, right? Which is, this is the most important bullet you could have. Let's put that one first. On that note, your strongest bullet should be first. Again, I'm a big fan of like that first bullet in two lines explaining me what you do, not a job summary, explaining what you do, right? Which is different than your job summary. 
And I also think the other strongest bullet should be the last bullet because as I'm scanning your resume, I'm scanning it. So I'm re I'm a real big believer in the first bullet should be really strong and the last bullet should be really strong. Um, I actually think your second and third bullets are okay because you actually have like, you know, replaces 33% of the systems. Like there's some metrics, again, numbers, metrics, impact, like, why do I want to talk to you? I think that's good. I think we probably could tighten them up a little bit because this one is actually two bullets, maybe. Your, your third bullet might actually be two bullets, right? Um, and if it's not two bullets, we could just tighten that up to be like one more coherent sentence so that's shorter. Um, I, I think that's fine. Like, you can talk about that, right? That's I think that that's okay. I don't think it's like amazing, but it makes sense. I think a lot of people probably have some experience around that. Um, we got. We probably got to jump to the next resume. Uh, I would say yeah. last thing there, that eighty percent bullet, the one, the third bullet there. You leave a lot of white space. Some people think you're wasting space, right? You could probably add some more words. To me, I, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. I think it allows so the brain a little bit of space to to breathe and, and aesthetically pleasing resume. That's the way normal text looks. So you got another resume we could pop up there, John, and kind of give a, some more diversity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the, in the, while he's doing that in the chat, I see, I always want to say hello to fe fellow uh, Omaha and professor Ron Warner. Good. It's good to see you. Um, I see Mark is saying, how do you tackle the fact that he's old and doesn't drive? That's a tough one, man. Uh, you're going to want, you're going to want, obviously, um, jobs or you can work from home, right? Um, I, I would avoid, oh, goodness, this one's got some, uh, we got some work areas to work on this one. This one's a tough one. Yep. Uh, I'm just looking at the resume that just popped up, Joe. Uh, I think that I wouldn't, I would be very, like, I don't want, the whole point of the resume is to get you the interview, right? I don't want you to put any of that medical data on there and have someone's going to screen you before they even give you a call, right? So that's a tough one. Um, I've had to yeah, deal with I, individuals I, who had like DUIs and they couldn't drive. So I, I get it. Right. Yeah. I mean, again, in your summary, I could say, you could say, I am a blah, 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 particularly looking for work from home or remote jobs as my primary option or something like that. So that way the recruiter knows like you're really looking for remote jobs, but you don't need to say why it shouldn't come up. And that, that maybe could help. Okay, Warren, you already saw Joe Grace. Right, so, so I like to start when the resume is aesthetically hurting my eyes. I like to start with Joe, you're, you're, you're good and you're awesome and you're a great person, but we've got to fix your resume, partner. Um, like, like what we're about to say may sound a little hurtful. I don't mean it in a hurtful way. I wouldn't be here if I was trying to be mean. Uh, Word vomit is what comes to my mind, right? You have put every word in the English dictionary, or rather in Newton's telecom dictionary, to be quite honest, in your areas of expertise. I call this, unfortunately, it's what I call it, and I don't mean it hurtfully, it's a list of crap, right? I want, I just look at the very first word, DevOps consulting. That sounds super cool. I bet you and I could probably talk about that for 20 or 30 minutes alone. I hope that you've got a fantastic, <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, a, I hope that you have a fantastic bullet, three to four sentences long, that talks about DevOps consulting. That's it. That's the, So then I'll go to the next one, threat analysis. I'm not a threat analysis expert. John kind of is. He's probably got 15 questions queued up in his head. What the heck does that mean? Right? And I hope yeah. that you have bullets later on to talk about that. So we got we have to get rid of your your areas of expertise. We're gonna have to like reduce it down to one. I want to go away personally, um, and we want I want you to write two to three sentences on each of those words you have in the areas of expertise, and then look at them and evaluate them critically because it's your own stuff. What's what's which ones contribute to the job that I want next? And if they don't. You got to toss it, man. And I see like the last list of them had like Outlook and SharePoint and Teams. Everybody has that now. It, it's kind of um, 
necessary to, to work in IT at all, just pull that stuff out, man. Let's see. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn it back to you, John, while I read some of the questions here. So, like, there's also some stuff on here that's not relevant to your job. Like, again, it's fine that you were a chaplain. Is that relevant to the job? Like, this doesn't need to be on here. You don't need to list that. It's just too old. Um, I don't know. Like, a lot of this stuff is not necessary. Like, you can leave, like, the Masters of Divinity and Bachelor of Hearts because those are, like, your hard certification. Your sort of, like, you know, your Academic. degrees. Yep. Right? So that's fine. But, like, I don't know that, that that is relevant. Right? I mean, if, like, it's really important to you, it's your resume, you can leave it on. But I don't think it's relevant. Like, I don't know that that one's relevant. Like, that one. Sorry, I just wanted to get down here as well. Like, notable awards, again, like, I mean, Bronze Star, yes. Everything else, No. I also have Military Outstanding Volunteer Service Medal. That's actually pretty rare. So if you want to keep that one, I'm fine with it because they're actually not, at least they didn't used to be handed out much. But like a lot of this stuff, I also don't know. I think as veterans, and I did this when I first got out, oh, these are my awards. And I actually don't think you probably need that whole section at all, to be honest. Um, your stuff that's older, that's this old, I mean, this is all related to like being a chaplain. It's like one or two bullets if you want to keep it, if you want to keep it, right? Yeah, but this, I'm, I'm just going to be honest, Joe. If I got this resume, I close it and I go to the next candidate. So I, I hate, I just want to be transparent with you. If I got this resume, I'm not considering you for any position I have right now, right? So yes, there are templates in the slides I shared, there's templates in the Slack. Um, so I think you can also try to go into the Slack and like restructure this with a template. As overall, you need less. I would say you need less and it should be more um, targeted for the type of role that you want. Warren, do you have some other comments as you're looking at this? Yeah. Uh, Let's start over, grab a template, start over, and to start with, what job do you want, right? And then everything in this resume that doesn't apply directly to the job that he wants is his next role, because I think that a SOC analyst, software test engineer, and DevOps consultant are kind of, are kind of very different paths. Maybe the software test engineer and DevOps are related, but um, I see RMF, like, why, I don't even, I don't know a single SOC analyst who really knows what RMF is, right? And I can't tell, I don't know why a software engineer knows that either, to be quite honest. So it's just like, there's just so much data in here. This is a, this is a perfect case for let's, let's create different resumes for different purposes, right? Yeah. Depending on the job and, you're and, applying for. And if you are a generalist that can do a lot of these different roles, again, I think that that's fine. I'm a generalist, generally speaking. But you could have a SOC analyst version of this, a software test en engineer, a DevOps, DevSecOps version. If you're interested in RMF or ISO roles, you could have a version that speaks to that. And I think that would do you good as well because you could have less on the resume for those specific roles. And I think you'll get better success. Uh, so I'm going to answer can... a couple questions in the chat. Shane um, said, I would expect people to ask in-depth questions for anything listed. I completely agree. Uh, I have... I've seen interviewers that would go, hmm, um, okay, I see. They picked the hardest thing on there. They're like, talk to me about TFTP, go. Like, right. and they're like, um, well, uh, they're like, you're done. And they end the interview, right? So I, I agree with that comment. Um, let's see. There was another question I think um, I, wanted to, I wanted to try to address. Uh Mm. Oh, Cassandra. Cassandra asks, can we elaborate a little bit on how to fluff my resume without trying to break into cyber? And then someone else mentioned that they had gone, uh, I think Shane said he went to WGU and got a BS in CSIA. I'm not 100% sure what CSIA is in computer science and information assurance, I'm guessing. Um, so th the concept here is I came from one career field. 
I've gone and got a master's degree, maybe maybe a bachelor's degree, maybe get some certifications, and I have no experience, right? How am I trying to break into cybersecurity? Um, it's uh, a colleague of mine, Professor Ron Warner, is in this chat. Uh, he and I have gone round and round on this because he he has spent quite a bit of his uh, uh, personal time uh, as an academic at Bellevue University here in Nebraska, teaching cybersecurity basics to people, and they come out and they're like, "Hey, I was a dental tech or a." Um, uh, Asthetician or something, and now I went to got a master's degree in cybersecurity, and I want I want to make those eighty thousand, ninety thousand, hundred thousand dollar cyber jobs. And I'm like, sorry, you don't have any experience. Try calling the SOC and seeing if you can get you know a, a junior engineer or a junior SOC analyst job. Right? Um, haven't answered the question yet. How do you fluff it up? The volunteer experience, stuff you do in your lab. Um, and I say, what's your lab? You know, look around your basement. Gather up all your old mom and dad's computers, throw some Linux on them, throw some Windows XP on them, start throwing Metasploit at them. The things you experiment on in your basement, the things you you do on Hack the Box, um, any any of the FTX, uh, is it FTX? No, that's not the right word. Um, CTX. CTX. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Anything you're doing in that environment, th those are um, things you can document on your resume and get some experience for in lieu of job experience. So just some ideas. Yeah. yeah, and we can bring up a resume example of that in a minute, but we do have a lot in the queue right now. But there are templates where underneath your summary, maybe your education certification, you can have sort of like professional development and you can list like, these are the Udemy courses I went to. I attended DEF CON or I attended B-Sides or I'm a member of VETSEC or, you know, WESIS or whatever. You know, this is my home lab because then you can craft your stories around everything you're doing to try to break into the industry. So for this one, we've got a lot of white space. So like, it seems like we could maybe, I don't know, tighten up the white space is my first thing. And I think there's a disservice by not having a summary of, of anything, right? Like the first thing at the top of your page is CEH, which I find odd. Like, I feel like there should be something about like, Hello, I am Jonathan. And this maybe is where people have different opinions of cover letters, because if this is your resume, but you have a cover letter, then it maybe makes more sense that you have a cover letter because you don't have the summary on the resume. So one of those two things, maybe in this case, um, the other thing, so it's red font is bothering me. Yeah. I, I'm again, black, black and white please. Um, so, I, I'm having an issue. Again, I'm aesthetically, uh, I, I like aesthetically pleasing. They have played reindeer games with the margins, right? Where we're not using the one inch margins. And I hate that. It, it's a, it's a personal aesthetics thing, right? Like I'm, I'm anal retentive and I want it to be, you got to make your, if you're trying to play reindeer games with the margins, that means you've added too much junk. And we're trying to keep it under two pages or we're trying to get all on one page or something like that. Okay. Hey, John, is there any way you could zoom in a tiny bit? This one's just a little bit on the tiny side. Can you zoom in on your end or not? Yeah, I can. And uh, that's a lot, but here's, here's an example of something. Ah, perfect. So if you are applying for DOD contracting positions at like Mar4 Cyber, Cyber Command with Lockheed Martin or Boeing or GDIT, this is probably okay. If you are applying for pen testing, red teaming gigs in the commercial space, this is still too military specific because no one knows what threat hunt operations are potentially, right? It might vary, but just something to think about for your audience. Like I know what this is. A lot of the people around Fort Meade are gonna understand if that's the audience that you're targeting, but I just wanna call that out, okay? I, I mentioned that defense. I think I mentioned defense cyberspace operations. No, nobody knows what that means, really. Also, the 95th CPT, Marine Corps. Like, you know what? Hoorah, devil dog. I love it. But we don't have to put any of that in there, right? We can put, you can, it's your resume. We can make shit up. So what would I call this? I would say network defender or, or senior network defense, senior information security professional. Information security analyst, right? Any of those would work, right? Call it that and then say, um, uh, I'm trying to look. Oh, you're at Scott Air Force. Is that Scott's? That seems like a typo. 
Scott Air Force Base is not Scott's Air Force Base, right? So, boom, I'm done looking at it. But um, just say Marine Corps, Illinois, right? There's, there's, there's like, there's just all this extraneous data in there that's just like, it's just like imagine like details that you're in, you're in a, um, a class that they're just throwing, they're, they're speaking at you in a language you don't understand. That's, that's what it is. It's extraneous details for the, for the re person reading it. Some other things I notice is that it's only one page, which is good, but you don't have an education section at all, or like you have certifications. So I'm assuming maybe you don't have a degree. That's not clear to me. Um, there's also some other stuff in here. Like this is kind of the world I work in, or at least adjacent. And like, I don't know what your deployed mission security suite is exactly. I have a pretty good idea of what that means. But again, is that relevant? Are people reading the resume going to know what that is? And you, I don't know. This is why we do some OSINT on the position, right? So um, there's a lot of stuff in here I understand because this is closer to the world I work in, but there's still some things in here which seem very, very like, CPT specific and possibly Marine Corps CPT specific, right? Where I think the Navy and the Army CPTs maybe have different lingo to some extent. So again, that's just one thing to keep in mind. Like yeah. uh, this is also like, get that shit off your resume. I don't think that has <laughs> any value at all. Okay, I, I'm, I'm upset because you stole my thunder on that one. I was getting ready to say, um, can we just get rid of the last bullet? Um, going to the vulnerability management bullet or vulnerability remediation strategies. I want two more sentences on that behind that bullet. Fantastic. Um, uh, meanwhile, get rid of the real time intelligence threat analysis, right? Which greatly enhanced. That sounds like you're talking about that system's abilities, not, um, I forget our candidate's name, not as it Jonathan. Shane, Shane. Jonathan. Shane. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Also, it is three pages. For some reason, it wouldn't let me scroll down more. So, my apologies. Thanks for clarifying that. But it's too many pages. You like? Oh, you have we got a sin. We got a sin down there at the bottom. Um, go to the. Okay, so here's my beef with this. Set, oh, the job related training. It's a table. No tables. The ATSs don't like tables very well. Secondly, I am getting zero out of this list of crap. I want you to take each one of these and tell me. Well, first off, you've got offensive cyber operations school. That should go in education, right? Then you've got all the NSA stuff, right? Like all those trainings are just classes over at the FanX or the CanX, right? That's fantastic. I think that the best training I ever got was probably over there. However, like what did you take away from it, right? That's what I really care about. The fact that you went through those classes isn't going to get you the job interview. It's what you learned in those classes using Metasploit, using Kali Linux, using whatever, right? Things that are... Yeah. And I'm very confused as well, because like you have certifications up top, but your security plus is here, but you've taken like five SANS courses. Did you get the SANS certifications? Like th those, so those are other questions I have. Now, let me be very clear. If I'm hiring an offensive person, like an offensive operator or a pen tester, I'm interviewing you, right? I am, I am certainly going to schedule the interview based on this resume. So I just also think that that is helpful. Like if I have a job and I need someone to break systems, like I'm giving you a call, I'm going to ask the recruiter to schedule. But so in terms of like you improving the resume, there are things you can do to improve. But I also just want to be clear that I think it's okay. All right. Warren, anything else you definitely want to hit on before we go to the next one? Nope. I, okay. I'm ready to go to the next one. Okay. If you have questions, definitely let me know. I think we're to John Doe in the queue. All right. I'm going to zoom in, but not make it full screen so that I can scroll down. It seemed weird. Maybe. No problem. Know. All right. So uh, well, now, now it looks. Oh, hold on. There you Sorry. go. Oh, Sorry. I got one good hand. Uh, I would say you have one hand. So we got a couple, we got a couple issues right off the bat. 
that we've kind of talked about a couple times. One, the center justification in the middle of the screen is not great. The big, fat, honking bullets aren't great. The summary's too long. We've got a table full of bullets. Um, the technical skills is really just a list of crap. So let's let's like back up off from that, right? So we want to make that summary super punchy, super strong, two sentences. Who, what, where, right? That's it. What do I need? What do I want? Those other bullets about your technical competencies, or pardon me, I think that's what they are, system administration, cybersecurity, give me a bullet with three sentences on it. If you still think it's great, put it in the appropriate experience section. Um, the technical skills, same deal. Write three sentences on each one of those words. If it's good and strong and you like it, add it to the experience section. If you don't like it, it's got to go, right? The certifications are fantastic. I love them. Let's just left justify them reverse chronology, give me a date when you got it, and if John's reading your resume, when it's expiring, right? Yeah, so personal yeah, preference yeah. there. Absolutely agree. There's way too much in the summary. I'm a big fan of two to four sentences max, and there's stuff in here you don't need. I don't need to know that because you're going to list the certifications down below. Also, this section isn't doing anybody any good. That whole section, like everybody probably has this and that doesn't and stop, like just take it out. It doesn't, if like, if you have really good oral communication skills, then link to me the presentation you gave at your local B-Sides conference so I can watch you give the oral presentation. Because if that's not the level you're at, then like, don't list, I'm an amazing oral presentator, presentator, which I am obviously a great presentator. <laughs> All right. What else do we got? I think I agree with Warren on everything else there. Yeah, left justify all of this. Um, what do we got for bullets? Cyber threat hunter. I love the fact that you have used a term that the industry knows because I guarantee that's probably not your like AFSC or MLS. So I appreciate that. Um, so I, I like his first bullet. Um, vulnerability yeah. detection, analysis, and recommendations for vulnerabilities occurring within Disney AOR, except the word AOR, right? That's not a that's not a that's a DoD word, right? So it's jargon. We gotta we gotta get rid of that. Um, designated also. Um, I would and like I to add on to that though. Like, what else yeah. can you tell me? What what capability we're using? We're using Tenable Nessus. We're using Rapid Seven. We're using some like Open Vaz, right? Like, just tell me what you're using. Because I care. I want to know. And if you if you're not allowed to specify, if you only if you're using like classified systems, like say, you know, utilizing government proprietary and classified systems. And then and then at least I know that you can't tell me what the system names are that you're using. And then I think you have some like weird things. Like I think this means mission systems. You need to spell that out. I think you have done this to make this one line, but I would just make it two lines because I don't well, like MX. I think you mean mail procedures. Well, like th those, those are weird. I'm not a big fan of that. I would just make it two lines because you did this again. MSN partner, MSN partner. I, I'm a hundred percent sure you mean mission partner, but also what does mission partner mean? So again, think about your audience. Like I, in the DOD contracting world, you might be okay. But it could be better because you have to remember the recruiters aren't cyber threat hunters, right? So if like a recruiter reads that, they probably have no idea what that means. Um, again, this is not like the worst. We're just kind of nitpicky a little bit. But you go from like having really good bullets to like not having good bullets here because there's not enough information here like identify and diagnose issues and problems is applicable to you, the barista, the medical person, the warehouse person. Like I, I need more information uh, about all of these bullets if they're applicable, in my opinion. Agree. Warren. Agree. Also, um, because um, Forrest is asking questions about the length, I think you're losing some valuable space by putting the city of Missoula IT technician, and then that little intro bullet all on, the, all on different lines, right? 
Um, I don't think the intro bullet that says provide desktop support is necessary. Just make that a full bullet and talk about it more, all the things that you do. Put the IT technician and city of Missoula all on the same line and then put 2020 to, pardon me, 2020 to present, all same line, right? Just conserve some space. Again, my friend, I think may have played some reindeer games with the column, with the margins, right? Um, I, I feel like it's probably beyond the one inch. And then the education, why did you make me wait to find out you had a BS in cyber operations to the very end? I'd already moved on from your resume because I never got to that section. Put that up at the top. I, I'm a big firm believer of short summary, certifications, education, right off the bat. Don't make me guess. Make me make me know right, right away why, why I should want to hire you. But expected 2025. So here's the thing. How many hours have you completed of the degree program is my question. Because that's a ways out. And like if you just started, I don't know that I like that because it's 2022 still. So like, again, if you're in the program and you're full time, I get it. But that's three years away. I don't know. I don't like it at all. Now that I see that, it's pretty small on my screen. So I didn't actually see expected 2025. That's a three years away. Get that out of there. The whole thing needs to go. Yeah, that's right. that's good. That's you're good, John. Okay. Um, right, I was so commenting. Somebody, um, let's see, Mister. Um, I think. Uh, now, now I lost it because it scrolled off my screen. Somebody asked about um, LinkedIn, having your LinkedIn profile and your resume synced up. Um, what I have found is that it's best when I'm helping a candidate refresh their resume and fix a bunch of issues. Let's just leave your LinkedIn profile alone. Get a nice professional picture up and let's work on your resume. And when we get your resume into a, a, a cogent, intelligent, easy, aesthetically pleasing state, then let's go back and sync your LinkedIn profile to look like your resume. That, that would be my recommendation usually. All right, so let me scroll back up. For some reason, when it's in full screen, it doesn't want to go to the second page, but we'll we'll get to the second page then. I love the fact you put Ted Lasso in there. That's very funny. I love this. Did we already review this last year? This looks very familiar. If we did, I don't remember it, but um, I, I also appreciate that. Uh, cybersecurity auditor. Now you're talking my language. Those are my people. Although, uh, being that you did it in the Army and it looks like you're still active duty, I highly recommend getting the CISA certification. When you get out and you become a civilian, that's what they're going to be looking for with cybersecurity auditor around it. Um, one of the things I will say again is that there's no summary. So if you are the type of person that wants a resume with no summary or no intro at the top, then you probably do want a cover letter because I don't know any, like there's no intro. It's like, I don't know. To me, it's not personalized as the hiring manager, right? I'm not a recruiter. I'm a hiring manager. So when I get the resume, I want to try to be like, do I want to interview Ted Lasso? And like, I don't know, like, I don't know how many years of experience you had because you didn't summarize it for me. So I'm like, and that's important too. I'm going to go on a tangent for like two seconds. Like I might need to know how many years of experience you have in the DOD contracting world, because I have to know if that qualifies you against the LCAT I'm trying to fill. Right. It's the, the government literally tells me, like, for this position, this person needs at least a bachelor's and four years or an associate's in six years or a high school diploma and eight years of experience. So, like, if I don't quickly know how many years of experience you have, I got to do math and then we're fucked because you don't want me doing math. Uh, I, yeah, Jason, I think made a nice comment in the chat. What does Ted want to do? What, what does he want? So ag agree. Um, I do like the Stig and SCAP. Those are great. Uh, I, I just I want you to go a, a tiny bit further, right? Like, um, what were you stigging, right? Was it was it a router? Was it a Linux server? Was it Windows 10, right? Um, was, was it, it IoT? Was it 5G? Like All that. Yeah, I want to know a little bit more. Uh, and it's, again, not bad. I want to know more. Um, having worked with CIS controls, the, con the concept of a SCAP 
tool. I think a lot of people don't know what that is, right? Um, I'm not saying that it's bad. I just don't know that a lot of people know what a scap tool is. Um, maybe you're served better by talking about the actual technology you were using, if you can. Or Gordon, sort of sounds like an NSA location. Uh, I'm picking up hints of uh, classified things, right? Or maybe it's just SCCM or HBSS or something like that, right? Um, I think that's pretty, again, pretty good. I think the most glaring error is that you don't have a summary or intro. So again, you all, like, I also don't know if you have like certifications or education. Oh, let me try to get to page two. So like, okay. So let me make this Oh bigger. my gosh, all those certs. Why, why I had to wait to see those. I right. wanted to see those at the top. Top. That's crazy. That's a lot. So you put your search at the top. I don't care if you have an intro interview. I, I'm i telling I mean, you right now. I mean, that's a lot. That is, oh, you know what I don't like? The date's right next to the cert. Well, that's um, I, like, I can't, like, they're all out of order. Yes. I just, I don't, I, don't know I don't what order, they're, order. they're not in date order. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, Mr. Franklin. I, I personally like reverse chronology, but I'm good with any chronology that's that makes sense. Also, this is me. I do not. I don't think I need that. Like, like this is your graduate certificate. Your resume is two full pages, and it's a very full. I don't know. I don't know that I want all the explanation. Like I have on my resume that my SIGINT course was like 782 hours or whatever it is, but I don't, I don't know. Warren, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, so I don't know. Like I love me some SANS training. Um, I've got two SANS certs. They're fantastic. Uh, if, if Mr. Is it Lasso is still right? If he's proud of that, that's fine. Um, he's got a degree from Western Governors. He got it in 2021. Great. I don't need the explanation. Um, I don't think I need the Army Cyber School at all. I don't think I, I, you know what? I don't need the explanation on the Western Governors BS either, right? Like you got a BS and you got an MS. Fantastic. List of dates. Let's press on, right? Here's my key takeaway here. I didn't realize you had a bachelor's and a master's because it just gets lost in everything you're trying to say here. Yeah. Again, 30 seconds. Yeah. 30 seconds. I'm not sure I would have figured out you had a bachelor's and a master's. Same. Um, I'm going to, uh, Miss Felice said something that I, I, I disagree with on to some extent. She said, put GPA and the honors. I don't care what your gpa was unless you just graduated college and you're 22 because i'm looking at 40 other resumes um and and to be totally honest i disagree with some of my peers at the consulting firm i work they only want to look at the highest gpa and to me i'm like those people are nerds and not fun and not the person i want to work with who do i want to get stuck on an airplane with for the next four hours who do i want to get stuck in a layover with for the next two days right is it the guy who got a 4.0 or the kid who got like a 3.2 played a little soccer was in a fraternity also has a certification and he's kind of fun to hang out with. Right. So just a thought to perspective. The, the whole concept of being stuck in a car with somebody for four hours or being stuck on a flight for like, you know, two layover type flight from uh, East coast to West coast. That's a real test, right? Like you really find out some things about a person. I want to say one last thing before we go on to the next resume. I really like the fact, I really want to make sure we highlight good things we see too. This is a good bullet that led to a 98% compliance rate. This, you list the number of network devices. You list the size of the enterprise network. I love that characterization because it helps me because if I'm hiring someone to be a network administrator or cybersecurity professional, on a really large network, I know you're familiar with that kind of environment. So I just wanted to call out that I love th that 
to be part of this. Yeah, I right, think we got a whole I think, bunch more. I, yeah, no problem. I, I like I like a lot about that resume. I want some more. I want some more explanations of the tools, if possible. I realize it sounded like he was in an NSA role. All right. Ooh, we got us an author. Looks like he's published there. I saw I just saw a blink blink across the screen. Um, okay, so my beef with this one is um nice, concise army veteran summary. I dig it, but he's got some baloney in there. I call them BS platitudes, bullshit platitudes, right? It's the incredibly strong soft skills, remarkable capacity for rapid development. I want to throw up. Yeah, John's giving it the thumbs down. Um, it's it's Brant's. It's it's a platitude. Um, it's trite. It's um, it's it's almost a meme in the resume editing world. If everybody says it, it's probably false, right? And I'm confident that if Warren said that he was good at resumes on his on his resume, someone would be like, I think the guy sucks, right? So we all have our opinions of what incredibly strong soft skills mean. Yeah, Just my two cents. I did. So I had the same thing at B sides Northern Virginia. One of my buddies was there. I used to work with, and we agreed to disagree a little bit for like new college graduates that maybe are kind of struggling to characterize themselves. But if you're if you have a couple years of experience, there's something better you can probably put on there than that. Like I'm a published author with multiple published works. Like, I mean, I think rapidly developing technical skills like you could tell me a little story maybe if you really like if that's your thing like maybe that's the one thing in the summer you call out here's the other thing though is i don't know what you are and what you're looking for right are you an educator are you a cybersecurity professional like i am looking for a job like i'm interested in roles that will have me doing right I need that extra line. Now, again, you've applied probably for a particular role. If I'm the hiring manager, right? You've applied for my cyber educator soft skills role, but like, I don't know, you don't, you don't characterize it yourself, which is again, why I'm a big fan of doing that right up front. Um, so I don't know. Those are some of my other thoughts. This is also a very short resume. It looks like it's a one pager. Oh Lord! What 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 made you? Oh Lord! I, I'm not sure. Okay, oh, there, okay, yeah, it's that's a lot. It's a word word vomit a little bit. Yeah, um, I'm curious on the on the links. When I saw you flash th past the technical projects, um, did those links take us to something? personal and specific to the candidate that that he or she may have done right if it is like if they wrote the article or if they wrote the blog or it's um they wrote the code associated with that i love it i i actually think that's fascinating yeah. um for instance yeah. i i spoke yeah. at a conference and i at rsa right with uh believe it or not ron warner and a couple other colleagues but uh that should probably be on your resume but if this is just random links to something you think is really cool that you worked on. Probably don't want that on there. Yeah. I'm gathering that they're the projects that they worked on. Yeah. It's the blog. Yeah. It's oh, their okay. blog. Then that's that good. Sense. Then I like it. But here again, if you graduate back in 2018, you don't necessarily need your GPA. But again, this is different because my advice is generally if your GPA was 3.5 or higher, man, that's pretty good. I could list that. So again, it's all of those like little individual biases and you're never going to get everybody to agree on everything. I like the fact that you said you're on the Dean's list. Is that mean I, that I'm going to interview you? You were on the Dean's list. Oh, you weren't on the Dean's list. Get out of here. Like that's not a deciding factor though. Right? So like, is it good? Sure. Is it going to get you the interview? No. Yeah. I have been accused by uh, my friends of being the opposite of an academic snob. So, which I'm okay with. I, I still like the academic people. So, but yeah, these technical skills. So generally when I ask about this, what I get is 
I want to beat the ATS. Okay. All right. Let's talk about that then. Is it one, if you're customizing your resume a little bit for the type of role, then you should be able to put in the types of things in your bullets that are required in the job requirement or like in the types of job requirements for the types of roles, right? So if you're in the SOC, obviously I'm going to need to know about ticketing systems and scenes, right? Or SINs or however people pronounce it, right? So like if I have Splunk and I have, you know, whatever ticketing system experience, Jira and Confluence, then you would want bullets to go into that because it'll get picked up. All right. But you don't want to do that. You just want to cheat. Cool. Okay. I get it. You're a red teamer. All right. Then take all of that shit, put it in three font on white text and put it in a footer somewhere. So I don't have to look at it. Then if you get caught, you could say, Hey, I'm just hacking your ATS system. And either that person is going to love that answer and hire you on the spot, or they're not going to hire you. And they probably weren't going to hire you anyway. So remember, you get what you pay for for this workshop. <laughs> uh, I, I'd, I'd like to see this this uh, candidate move those certifications up. That that's it. Those yeah, are great certs. The, those are great certs. This guy, this this candidate sounds fantastic. Yeah, move the certs to page one. Tell me what kind of job you want. I'm probably going to interview you. Yeah. I wouldn't um, put your podcast there until you launch it, though. Um, also, like, here, this is a good example. And I have this conversation a lot with different people on VetSec, especially people that are pivoting from non-cyber to uh, cyber. Um, his educator and his custom protection officer, they don't really apply, right, to cybersecurity. The combat engineer definitely doesn't. Let's, let's at least with a combat engineer, this one's easier for me. Let's write one strong bullet that says i was a honorably discharged u.s vet army veteran uh who performed combat engineer functions this date to this date and then move on one bullet like it's, it's everyone's like oh he's a veteran fantastic that and then they, they they categorized you as as probably better than the average um you know criminal off the street and we don't need to know what you did as a combat engineer because it doesn't apply to the job you're applying right Make sure you put if you were a sniper, though. <laughs> of course. All right. Let's see. All right. Let me see. I'm starting to lose track of which ones we've looked at now. Um, let me pull this one up. Hold on one second. All right. We did not look at this one yet, I don't believe. Oh, Jason Ellers. This guy. Now, I have conversed with this gentleman on VetSec multiple times. He has a giant brain, right? Um, but that giant brain has done some aesthetically unpleasing things. Uh, no, actually, I, I quite like it. Just the columns. Like, or pardon me, the, the, there's the columns on the side are a little bit, I'd like them a little wider. Uh, and I don't like that black line that's separating professional experience from the actual experience there at North County Federal Credit Union. And we've got a bullet mismatch. He's got bullets that are hyphens in some areas, and he's got bullets that are circles in other areas, and none of the bullets are all lining up along the same, right? So we're trying to work on some aesthetics. That's that's what I'm seeing right off the bat, right? But I'm being really picky here because um, I, I love certs. I love the education. So I would say overall, this is a pretty good resume from my yeah. first glance. Um, I still think in your summary, you should tell me the sorts of roles you're looking for, especially for someone of your level. So I'm going to digress a little bit at this point for those of us who are old. Um, you should really be tailoring your resume for the job you're applying for at that point in your career. So if you so it's fine to have a generic resume that's current, which is great. But if you're actually hunting for your next job, you should be like, yeah, my next job needs to be like one of these two or three things. So if that's true, then 
you know, your last bullet here, could, like you're interested in all of those things, but that's almost hurting you, I think, to some extent, because are you interested in like governance GRC role at the director level? Like, do you mean executive level? Do you mean like acting technical director? Like you have it there a little bit, but like, I would just have a resume that says, I am interested in your role at Lockheed Martin as the technical director, blah, blah, blah. And that's like, because at some point you get senior enough that you should really be kind of picking and choosing which roles you're applying for. So I would highly recommend you consider tailoring the resume for the one job you're applying for. Scroll down, please. Yeah. Is uh, United Way looks sparse. I feel like as a member of the board of directors, the chairman especially, he could probably write one strong bullet there on his responsibilities and press on, right? It's fantastic, right? Nothing wrong with what he's got listed there. Just why make it three tiny bullets? It's probably like one strong three sentence, four sentence bullet. I agree. These are feeling kind of wordy, right? Like he's got positions Especially where he's. But yeah. well, well, he's at like um, at the Vermont Health. He's there for a year and some change, right? He was at, uh, but he had two different jobs, right? I don't think he needs to do re reissue that section. I think that he could say University of Vermont, right, and then cybersecurity operations, and then talk about it, and then the next line vulnerability tech, all that stuff, and then maybe because from November twenty seventeen. Like there's a, there's a little bit of date issue there. Like you go April 2016 to 2019, just list that, right? And then a, probably a few or a, a couple lesser bullets, right? Like pick the higher, stronger ones and, and move and kind of kind of let some of the old stuff go. There's a bias, which I see all the time and I argue against because it makes it seem like you're kind of job hopping. I don't I don't agree with that view, but people will see that break and maybe only look at the dates. And I know there are hiring managers who are like, oh, this person job hops, I don't want to interview them, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. But by combining them, it'll say April 2016 through August 2019, and you may be able to get around some of those people who hold that view. I am not one of them, but I hear it. Um, And then this is so old, I don't know that you need to necessarily list this out. You could just have something like your your time in the Marine Corps underneath. But that's so old, it's pretty irrelevant in my opinion. Can we hit that? So old. Jason is old. No, I'm sorry. I'm just He was busting my chops earlier. I felt necessary to say that. <laughs> but it, it's not really relevant now like if it was super relevant still it could be applicable but it doesn't seem right it doesn't seem that relevant on my resume i finally scaled down my resume all of my military experience is now just a one line and it was like you know u.s army SIGINT analyst Wiesbaden, germany dates u.s army SIGINT analyst fort b dates u.s army analyst overseas dates so that it has the chronology, but there's literally no bullets with it anymore. And I got that tip from some technical recruiters to be like, it's not really relevant, but that way you could still show that you were in the military. I could probably make it all one line at this point. Um, so anyway, something to think about. It's my not, the world's, being, it's being not old. the world's longest resume. Yeah. Being old, my resume, you could tell that I was a veteran, but it like doesn't say and it doesn't say that anymore. I just, it's just, it's, it's fallen out of my experience section because I go back to 2009, which that's it. And I, that, that part's about to fall off. Believe that I worked for Booz Allen 
back in 2005 to 2009, John. God, that seems like an eternity ago. Back when we were private, when it was yeah, like back with the big better. shrimps and the the chocolate fondue fountains and the free liquor and all. Yeah, back in the day, none of that happens anymore. All right, we'll go on to the next one, Jason. Unless you have any questions, I think overall, just to be clear again, that is already a good resume. And if you wanted to tweak it for like an individual job, there are some things you could probably do, but it's already pretty good in my opinion. All right, David Jackson. So we I got a latitude right off the bat, right? What? Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know why he's, he's having a fit. Um, so a highly resourceful and disciplined professional. Let's get rid of that, right? Um, I like 30 years of experience. I, I hesitate on 30 years, right? Where, where the ageism thing comes into play, right? I I had 20 plus years, I think, on my resume. Uh, and I've just left it there, even though it's more close to like 25, 26 now. I just put 20 years because I don't want to be um, discounted. Uh, otherwise, I have I have a problem right off the bat, Warren. Go ahead. Available for internships. You have 30 years of experience. Mm. I don't understand. I don't understand the resume at that point. Fair enough. So like you're a full-time student, right? So I, I mean, if that's true, if you're a full-time student, then like, you need to tell me like I'm, I'm pivoting careers. Oh, terminal leave. Okay. I'm that I don't think internship is the right term then because that threw me off. I, I've seen, I, a, I I've seen a little bit too. Like um, for some reason there's like these, programs to help veterans then like ease their way into uh, a full-time role. So I've seen that Still a little great. bit, but I don't, I, I agree that maybe it's not necessary. Right. I think I would just say available start date and then leave and, it at that. And, and you might want to say like your ETS date, like available for full-time work. I don't know. It just struck me as odd. It just struck me as odd. Maybe that's something people are getting, um recommendations on but i would maybe say active duty military available on date and then it's very clear and then like i don't have questions like what do you mean you're available like that could mean a number of different things if you think about it i don't know what that means like that's when i will no longer be incarcerated <laughs> okay so we've kind of covered the key areas of leadership and expertise that's a bunch of bullets it's also not helpful we need we need sentences on those, right? Two or three sentences if you think they're valuable. Move them into your experience section, right? We probably want to get rid of that area. Uh, professional experience has that line. Probably want to get rid of that. Uh, the theater undersea surveillance Pacific Oak Harbor, Washington. That's a mouthful. If we can maybe that may be an employer. I get that. Um, it is um that's a pretty pretty well understood term even in the civilian world. So that's fantastic. You might want to drop deputy comms and it department head though right those are words that don't really benefit you um in in having stated that you are the ism right yeah i think that that's not bad though overall like your bullets i think aren't bad and again like you have the personnel you have the number of like systems and workstations sprinkled in there with like some stuff about the annual it budget i think is okay you, you i just know, want more this. i want yeah. more on the on the budget like what did you do did you did you do you have any metrics to talk about how well you spent it uh were you under budget over budget did you improve the budget did you uh did you organize it in such a way that you were able to use extra money for training for your troops whatever right like some something along those lines i want to know a little bit more detail like, yeah, for more detail here too, like how many different, as part of the CCB, like if we review three or 1400, like give me estimate maybe of like how many things like we're going through that review and authorization could be helpful. I also don't think that bullet is doing you any good at all. And I would consider getting rid of it. That's my opinion. 
Why? Why? Uh, I'm curious. Like, I don't think it's bad. Did I? I, 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 I know that's a full time job for some people. I, I guess if you're trying to get hired as an ism, which I'm not sure, but if your job is to get hired as an ism or an iso or an isse or whatever, one of those flavors of roles, then I would rather you spend the time focusing more on what you did as the ISSO or ISSM and give me some more details on that rather than the fact that I had people go through cybersecurity awareness training would be like my, that's where my brain is at. Okay, fair. Um, I was it's not, of, it's not the worst bullet ever. No, no, certainly not. Uh, I, I don't want to go and just get more details. Like the third bullet, again, I want to know like how you deal with the budget. On the fourth bullet that talks about NIST and ITRMF, I'm assuming that's NIST CSF, but I'm a NIST nerd, right? I know NIST 171 is CMMC. NIST 853, that's a thousand controls if you're doing FedRAMP high, right? Like I want to know. I want to know details about the NIST version. So uh, mostly because I'm a dork and that's going to be something I'm going to want to talk to you about. That's, I'm right. gonna wanna... Were you managing <laughs> packages? Were you like updating POAMs? Were you closing POAMs? Were you in EMAS? Were you in some sort of other tool for that? That's yeah. all the stuff I want to know if your goal is to like get an ISM job. Yep, absolutely. Or if you wrote an SSP, whatever, right? All that. I want right. to know. Yep. So the EMO officer, those are those bullets look very much like an EPR or an OPR bullet. I'm not these are, these are doing a whole lot less for me than the first section was, mostly because it's not overly um, specific to a job you actually probably want, and we could probably roll that up into whatever an EMO does. Say that, press on. Yeah, I, I mean, like, if you want to keep the first two bullets, I don't know that the things about casualty drills are applicable. I, I don't know they're doing any good. And then, like, we get to being a COVID officer, which, I mean, we understand that's how things work, but... Yeah, I'd probably get rid of the shore training officer and combine that with like, these are all, all the same place. He's obviously, I'm guessing um, that, that Dave is, is moving up the ranks, right? He's moving up in responsibility. Um, but some of these are just not that applicable to the job that he wants. And I think we could probably build out the job that he wants more in those ism bullets and, and conserve some space with some of those non jobs. Yeah. Move that stuff up for sure. This top of the first page. So a lot of a lot of people must be using a format where it says education and certifications on the last page. First page. You want a job as an ism? Tell me you're looking for roles in ism. Put this on the first page. Schedule the interview. Yeah. Probably want to drop the certificate in network technology. It's just it's not it's not like a recognized cert. It's 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 good. It's just you probably have a bullet up in the ISM section that covers down on that. Uh, and then you have the certification in net plus, right? More than covers over the top of that. So. Yeah. You also have like a bunch of stuff down here in skills. And so when it comes to these like skill things that everybody wants to list, if like you really do use Linux a lot and it's important and you're good at it, then it should be in a bullet somewhere. Like, were you stigging Linux systems? Were you stigging Linux servers? Like I didn't see anything about Red Hat or Linux or C4i systems in the bullets. So instead of just listing stuff in your skills, if that's really important and critical and you have a lot of experience with that, it probably should be in a bullet. Like, are you doing programming? Like if you're like really good at Python and Java and HTML and PHP and all that stuff, there should be bull. I would prefer bullets to explain where, how, why, than just listing a whole bunch of things on the resume. So I know people want to get these skills on there, but I think like sometimes we're crafting bullets that are missing the mark. If you are a technical person, like I would rather know about like all your experience with like programming, see if it's schools and training, but not a lot of work experience. Like, are you actually proficient in Python? 
Like if you're not proficient in Python, I wouldn't put it on the resume, especially if you're not applying for a job where that's a requirement, right? Like if, because I will interview people, I just did this, sorry, I'm gonna go on a tangent for like one second. I'm hiring some threat intel people that are super junior that we're mostly going to have to train, but some of the job might require us to do some scripting and automation and programming. So if I'm hiring a data scientist that I'm gonna to train to be a CTI analyst, I'm asking specific questions about how strong they are in scripting and programming languages. So I know that I have that capability on the team I'm building right now. And I've talked to some people who have some like Python and Java listed, but when I asked them about it in the interview, they weren't really strong on it. So as an example, like you should think of you like, you can get a question about any of this. Like when was the last time you used Wireshark? You know, we really use that to look at logs at this place that we're hiring you to be an ISM for because we're weird. And you're like, oh, well, I took a class on Wireshark four years ago and haven't touched it since then. Then, then why would anybody want to have that on the resume? Hopefully that makes sense. Definitely put education and certification and skills up on page one though. Yep. Hmm. All right. We got other ones in the queue. All right. Yeah, I think this table, I think I give out a template that has this table and I need to change my template. All right, we're gonna get rid of that template in the, uh, the table in the template. All right. I wonder. I wonder same. if we have if if tap is to blame. Uh, maybe. So I have a couple of initial thoughts. Is that I would say how many years of experience you have in the beginning, because again, that's very helpful to me as a hiring manager. Like, can I hire you for a particular contract that has an LCAT requirement? You don't make me do math. Um, I think it's actually pretty good. So I. I have a strong interest in penetration and vulnerability analysis. That's, that's kind of saying what you're interested in, like what kind of jobs you want. I think this sentence, I, I have a lot of issues with that. Um, outside of that, I think it's okay. Warren. Yeah. I, I want to move it to the experience section. Otherwise it's, it's good. It's good stuff, um, except for that line you highlighted. Yeah, so some of that can get moved to the experience section. <coughs> Excuse me. But so here's my here's my issue with a lot of this stuff is the problem is one, it's a table and the ATS doesn't know what to do with tables. So we don't want to have tables, generally speaking, in most cases. I mean, if you are really strong in leadership and project management, then that can come out in the bullets. But what does listing cyber awareness do for you there? Like how, like that does, that's not really adding a lot of value. Policy implementation, you, you've implemented policy. Like, again, I, I think sometimes we're putting in some buzzwords or keywords here. If you're doing that because the job rec had it, and you've tailored the resume, then I can almost understand it, right? So if this were, if you're hiring or you're looking for pen testing roles and like, you know, they specifically said, we want someone with like Kali Linux and Metasploit and Jack the Ripper. And then you listed those specific things in the table, at least then I would know what you're doing, right? Because then I would know you want to make sure that the person who spends 30 seconds on this knows where okay this person has those three or four skills that hiring manager was looking for yeah i i also think jason a lot of times this is just some fluff people are trying to get on there to get past the ats and if they get asked about it they might not have a strong answer but in this one i don't know that those bullets are adding a whole lot because it sounds like you might be fairly technical um, this is also way too many bullets for one year of experience. We got to, I would say, condense this down a little bit would be my first reaction to this. <laughs> Sam, good, good catch there. Uh, 
let's see. I, I was going to comment that I have, I have, I'm a, I'm a consultant for Pertivity and we love, uh, I think, I think that the big four and other consulting firms feel like they're getting paid by the word. So that's, this resume gives me that feeling. Um, I know that a consultant that's probably at this candidate's level doesn't personally have all of these experiences and knowledge, but rather they've been on an engagement in which these things were discussed by a group or a pod of consultants. So, um, God, you guys got to stop. <laughs> so the better suit made me laugh. Uh, but so, so like, it's, it's not, these aren't bad bullets. I just, I think the individual may struggle to really have an intense conversation about any of them during an interview, right? If I decided to like, you know, I'm not a miter attack framework nerd but i know what it is but if you start asking me anything like like tell me the phases of it i'd be like mm, that's what the internet's for right I, I don't know the answer to that but you put it on here and it goes oh well how did you use it to strengthen security go Maybe. so here's here's the thing that i struggle with you tell me you're interested in pen testing and vulnerability management but you don't seem to have anything about pen testing and vulnerability management in your current role, right? So just bear with me. And then we were a special warfare operator. So like, what are you doing to become a pen tester? So like, I think there's a little bit of a disconnect overall. I would first of all, move some of this to page one but not all of this because that's too much. Like, just tell me you're a student with 320 hours of cybersecurity training and like maybe your anticipated graduation date. That's a lot of hours of cybersecurity training to not have your degree, right? I'm not wrong. I'm not a math person. Um, but like, I feel like some of this on page one helps me rectify that you're interested in pen testing jobs when you don't seem to be doing anything with pen testing. So I just wanted to kind of like get that macro level thought out. Could, could we scroll down again, please? All the way down or here? This yeah, is the like, second part. Like seal. We don't need none of that. Really? I mean, it's overkill. Like, yeah, you're a killer. We know it. It's awesome. Um, give me like, give me like one, two sentences on you're a seal. Cause, cause a lot of this stuff, I'm not sure how you're tying it back to your desire to be that cybersecurity person. It's super cool. And I know what all that stuff is, but it's like, how are you applying that stuff back to the cybersecurity piece? And yeah. honestly, I like you ever read something and you think you're being trolled a little bit? Like it looks like someone's someone Googled seal and then just pasted in all the bullets. None of these are unique or specific to this individual. Right? Those those are like I don't know, like it looks like coming out of JP5 or something like that, right? Like that's what it sounds like. It's just like it's, there's also a chance that you have a possible issue of like you're not allowed to put a lot in there either so if you're not allowed to put a lot in there either then just don't put very much and say i just really can't get into the details of this because it's classified and i think that's almost better because unless you're trying to work in some sort of like very niche offensive cyber operation that's going to deploy which i mean there is stuff like that like if that's the goal right you can tailor the resume but if you're like pen tester red team in cybersecurity, yeah, I would maybe keep this real short because I don't, I think maybe you've tried to make it applicable with like OSIN and TTPs. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're better to have less there. I think for like, if you are in a degree program, then I don't necessarily need all of like, this is all the stuff I'm studying. We've covered this on other, resumes like about like this is all the important stuff i study in school um put your anticipated graduation date maybe if like you're full-time or it's going to be the next year or two and then i would move all of this stuff though to page one 
Because again, you have a SEC plus, you have a net plus, you have A plus, you have a bachelor's already. In a lot of cases, that's all I need for my LCAT. If you're going like the DOD contracting route, you have a bachelor's, you have some certification. So your DOD 8570 or 8540 compliant, I can get you into a role. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of, of all of this, but but it's also not the worst either because we've seen some where it was like 700 words. So like, if you're gonna do it, at least it is like Burp Suite and Map, like I would assume Kali Linux, right? So if you're gonna do that, again, put that on page one, if you're really interested in becoming a pen tester. Anything else, Warren, or should we get to the next one? I think we should go to the next one. All right, we got a couple more still. Uh, Warren's about to turn into a pumpkin. He's getting sleepy. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way to, to 30 more minutes. Okay. That's all right. Do we really have 83 people still listening? Or no, I'm sorry. I, I see the number. 25. 25 people? Cool. Yeah. Patrick. They got that Proton email. <laughs> just something I noticed. I just yeah, noticed. No, I know. It's cool. Um, his summary is all bold, and it's center justified, which is breaking me a tiny bit. Uh, again, yeah, I don't again, know why. Like, the bold, it's too much bold. Yeah. The key skills, key knowledge, key abilities. Bleh. Yeah. I not a big fan of that and i would just have a certification section and unless you want to be a red teamer i would take that out and i might take that out anyway i'm I, again that's just a me bias thing i think putting the fact you're active on there is fine but like trying to be like top six percent top two percent on a training site i i just don't know about that uh so his HVAC bullet is straight up fantastic, right? It's it's a lot. And if I was hiring HVAC guys, that looks probably pretty good, even though I don't know squat about that. Um, this is one of those cases where Patrick is, yeah, I see that, uh, going from HVAC to cyber. Um, I, I've been called the dream crusher once or twice. I want to manage expectations right like that's a that's a, it's a tough pivot um you got the you're working on the masters right or you completed the masters in cybersecurity. i think you probably make a very respectable wage uh, okay 2023 finished thanks you probably make a pretty respectable wage as an hvac person i i think your first cyber job you may struggle to, to make the same amount of money i i'm wondering if you're comfortable with that yeah, I think that this is actually important and we should maybe spend some time on this, Warren. I know we have a few others in the queue. There's always the VetSec resume channel if we don't get to yours today because we only have, I only have about 30 minutes left. I think one of the things that is hard for people like this is you want to list like all this stuff you did and like how amazing a person you are, but it's not relevant to the job because your job you're trying to get is in cybersecurity. So first of all, I would definitely put your education and all this stuff at the top. And I don't need you to twice tell me you're in the top 6% and try hack me. I get it. So if you want to do that once, it's okay. And I would say your professional experience, pair it way down. This needs to be a one page resume. You need to consider the fact that the experience you have and all the prior jobs and in the military just really isn't relevant to you being in cybersecurity. So you're going to get the call back if you're willing to take a fairly junior, not necessarily entry level, but a fairly junior role to break in based on the education and training and your potential, right? It's those three things that are going to get you sort of like across the line as you pivot and people pivot all the time. We have someone, I'm pretty sure we have someone presenting here who like pivoted last year. I, I've talked to people who have crossed over from auto mechanics. I, I talked to a guy who was like running his own pool business. It's doable. It's just not easy. And if you have a lot of experience in one field, I think you do need to do some salary comparisons and some OSINT on salaries for someone that's just starting out in cybersecurity to make sure you've considered like 
I'm just going to make up some numbers right now, but if you're an HVAC person, you're making $80,000 a year. I don't know outside of like a big metropolitan area with a security clearance, your first cyber job is going to be at that same salary, unless you're going straight into like a management role, which is possible. Yeah, but if you yeah, if you're making 135, like someone's throwing out some numbers again, this might be fake. If you're making 135 as an HVAC person, I do not believe that that is very likely for your first cybersecurity role in most cases, unless you're like really working your network and you're like working your network and it's going to be like, oh, I know this person, they have a role, we've talked. It's not going to be a blind application to like Amazon. Nonetheless, or, yeah, I agree. I agree to all that. That, that was exactly my, my thoughts and kind of my concern. Um, and I had, like I said, with talking to, to Professor Werner from Bellevue, I've had that exact conversation that we've got these people that are like, you know, radiologists and, and, and different medical professions because Nebraska has a lot of medical uh, people here uh, making eighty ninety thousand $90,000 and they're the, the breadwinner for their family. And then they go and get a master's degree. They spend twenty thousand dollars getting it, and they're like, "Give me the cyber jobs." And I was like, "I'm just like you're, you're not ready for the, the cyber job at the same level that you're making as your current job." And so now they're kind of like angry, and, and I feel like I'm the dream crusher. And that's that's not my goal or my intent, but uh, maybe the reality check is that the academic universities are making a lot of money off of people's cyber dreams. Right. Yeah. I, I'm going to have a conversation now. So I would rework this resume because Ooh. your best pivot into cybersecurity is what Jay just put in the chat. I want someone who understands IOT, ICS, SCADA systems and cybersecurity because I can't hire any of them. And then the fact you also used to have a clearance is more helpful if you want to try to get back into DOD contracting because DOD contracting and the U.S. government and the Department of Defense want a whole bunch of people that understand IoT and SCADA and cybersecurity, and you can rework the resume. I am a professional with X amount of years of professional experience in the HVAC field looking to pivot into cybersecurity with a focus on IoT, ICS, and SCADA. And boom, that's an entirely different conversation that you can have now. So are there entry level roles like that? Yeah, because they're kind of all entry level, to be honest, because everyone's still trying to study that. That's a brand new, like happening field that's super hot. And that's, if that's exactly what you want to do, then you need to like use the I am a blank, seeking a blank, move the education and training to the top of this. I would still condense a lot of the HVAC, like we get it HVAC. Like that's fine, but we don't necessarily need the resume to be that detailed on exactly what you did. That can maybe come out in the interview a little bit. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that's a way to go. Warren, you want to jump in? No, no, I was just commenting to, to Reliza and some of the others that if we run out of time, you know, jump in the vet sec chat. Uh, I usually at least comment on, I try, right? You know, we all have full-time jobs. I try to comment on at least one resume a day in the resume channel. And there's days when it's quiet and nobody posts anything. But lately, it's been about one or two a day. And I think it's probably just because the numbers of VetSec members are kind of jumping right now because there's been so much social media posting. So um, we'll get to you. I would say that. Bill Bow Baggins. All right. I'm going to – I'm. there's two more in the queue, and I'm going to stick with this until we get to all of them. Um, you got a Gmail at least. Thank you, Bill Bow. Um <laughs> I like your summary. There's way too much is my first take. You also need to get this stuff on page one. We might want to pair it back a little bit, but you got to get that on page one. And there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. couple acronyms we probably need to soften a little bit the acronym usage spell them out a little bit um they're not horrible um like they're 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 pretty widely well-known ones but again hr isn't sometimes the ones screening your resume so 
we want to make sure we get both the spelled out as well as the acronym. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I like uh, I like the second bullet a lot, right? Talking about the technology he used, talking about MFA, increased application use. That's that's good stuff. Um, the thing is, there's a lot of really good bullets in here. It's really hard to read quickly because you have multiple sentences there. And I think you're struggling with calling out what's most impactful. So again, you really need to understand recruiters are spending 10 to 30 seconds on your resume. And when I get the resume as a hiring manager, I may spend 30 to 90 seconds on your resume to determine if I want to interview you. Right. So, yeah. So like, even in here, like when we go to like this, this bullet here, there's like a whole bunch of different things in here. And like, I don't know that we need that whole line and I don't know that we need this whole line. Right. So sometimes <laughs> a lot of people find cutting from the resume harder to do. So if you don't know exactly what you want, though, that's like a different conversation. You should go to the mentorship channel and have that conversation so that you can narrow down the resume, so that you can narrow down your job search. Um, one of the people I really like to follow just tweeted today. He was like, if you don't understand why you're looking for a job and then you take a job, that's why you're unhappy in six months. So just some things to think about. That was that was profound. Sometimes the simplest things. Uh, so this is it, that one, this um, system admin job, they were there for about nine months. And that's a lot of bullets for nine months. Maybe we pick the, the most significant two bullets. Um, yeah, 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 amen, Curtis. That was that was a lot. Um, maybe, maybe we uh, find the best two bullets for this particular experience. Um, just because there's so much there in only a year with the company. Um, just, you know, make it a little stronger, more impactful, save some space. You like I, you do not have a problem identifying the technical aspects of what you did and building the sentence. You're doing a really nice job there. Uh, I think it's just identifying the, the, the things that are the strongest hitting points for you, right? We got to probably reduce more than we have to create. Yeah. Yeah, there's just too much. Please move this section to page one. But also, I don't need a lot of the details of your organization if you want to include that. And that could still be on page two, I think. So, like, if you keep it on page two, you could, like, leave the details if you have room for it. But nobody's going to read that. Like, I get it. Part of ISC squared into DEF CON 207 chapter. Sweet. That's I kind of it. all I need. That's all I need to know. I would take off the rest of the information, but if you want to leave it, it is your resume. I like uh, it. Might, yeah. We might want to pair that back a little bit to get it on page one. So that's really easy to scan quickly. But again, I, I overall, I like that, but move all of this to page one and then get a mentor and be emotionally prepared to have the conversation of why are you looking for a job so that we can get your resume tailored a little bit for the types of jobs you want. I want, we've got at least one more in the queue I want to get to. Yeah, you're welcome, Curtis. All right. First off, let's start with fantastic name, Fabio. It's very large, though. I, we could we could squeeze that font down. Just a bit. Yeah, I'd, I would probably say like let's make let's make the name maybe two pitch sizes larger than the whole rest of the document, right? Like if so, if we're working with a pitch of ten. Then let's go with twelve for your name, and then everything else is, is ten, right? Including the phone number and email. And um, I don't think that the five year IT professional stuff like up in there. I don't think we need that. Also, like I can't tell because I'm not I'm not in Word and I'm not on uh, John's computer. It looks like he's on a Mac, but that stuff looks like you might have put it in the header of a Word document, right? Um, we recommend, or at least I recommend, you pull it out of the header 
and just put it in the regular part of the document because sometimes the scanning software can't read the header and it just misses your name. And so then a resume arrives in the HR manager's box and they're like, there's no name on this resume. How'd that happen? Because it was in the header. I definitely have seen that. Don't put your, your name and your contact information in the header. Um, one of the other things is that you have five years of experience and a two page resume. So it's not the end of the world, but shorter is generally better. Um, I think so, the summary of quals section probably just get rid of all of that and then move, would, move those words into a sentence, put it in the experience. Go ahead on the, on the summary. Five years of experience in the industry, but now you're pivoting into cybersecurity. What, what industry do you have five years of experience in then? Cause I'm confused. So are we pivoting into cybersecurity from what other field? Uh, so I will tell you, I'm a little confused as I scan that. So like, you can just say, I have five years of professional experience. I think is a better way to word that, right? I, because you're an IT professional with five years of experience. Hold on. I don't know. Something about that is weird to me. A little bit. And I don't think that title... I think we want to work on your title here. Like, is it IT customer service specialist? Then put IT customer service specialist. And it, it doesn't matter what Dell calls it. Like, if you're an IT customer specialist, put IT customer specialist. Because now I got it. So, like, you you have five years of experience in the IT industry and then in pivoting into cybersecurity. And now it's a concise sentence. And now I got it. I definitely want to oh. reduce reduce the summer the profile statement and move some of that into the experience section. Yeah. You can't be an industry leader with five years of experience. So we want to rework this sentence. All right. So I am seeking an opportunity where my five years of IT experience will translate into a role that allows me to pivot into cybersecurity to enhance my technical and leadership skills. Boom. I, I think I'm an industry leader in shit posting. I I think I have 20 years of experience. Sorry, just just added that. <laughs> also, That's true. There's also like you have too many things listed here. You're basically like, give me job, any job, give me any job. So I would say have a couple of different versions of this. Have a couple different versions of this. I, if Jason, if that's what it's trying to say, it's just not coming across very clearly. So I would change that bullet. This is also why you should have other people read your resume. It doesn't have to be Warren and John. It could be your mom or your aunt or your sister or your brother's husband. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I kind of disagree with all those because those people are actually normally nice to you. You want somebody who's in your life who is going to tell you the truth. Right, like, like my mom, mother in law, my sister in law. There you go, those people. <laughs> Give it to your brother in law or something. He's like, What the hell does this even mean? Uh, You're not an industry leader, <laughs> yeah. One of the somebody like that, somebody who's who's gonna be a tad on the truthful side. I, I think I could turn in a shit sandwich, and my mom would be like, That's lovely, sweetheart. That's uh, nice. Yeah, so get rid of your summary of qualifications. I don't think that's helping. I like the fact you have your certs listed. Pending. Don't like that. Oh, don't list pendings. No, you can't list pending certifications. I'm sorry. You just can't do that. Oh, I again, we talked about this earlier. I think pending like bachelor's or master's within two years is okay, but otherwise I wouldn't list that. Um, I'm I, curious. I Yep, I agree. I'm curious on the Google IT support certificate. Is that like me getting a LinkedIn certification? I don't know. I don't I don't know anything about the cert, so don't let me disparage it. I'm just asking that that if I'm thinking that, maybe somebody else might be thinking that. In the IT if I'm not if I'm a part of Help Desk International, maybe everybody knows that is and I'm I'm the dark I'm the dark in the dark. So
future future degree there in that master's in 2024. Got to get rid of that. Or give me a little more details on how you're doing, what the percentage completion is, or the number of credits you've accomplished. Yeah, I would definitely list number of credits. Okay, so here's another thing too is, this is totally not related. I would, I would nix the section and say that you are a veteran in your summary because that way people know because I don't know that you're a veteran and I think that that's fine to state. So I would say I am you know, a, a US military veteran or if you wanna state the branch, you can, right? I am a Navy veteran with five years of IT professional experience pivoting into the cybersecurity field I am looking for an opportunity where my years of experience in IT will translate into a meaningful role in cybersecurity as I you know, pivot into that industry. That's it, two or three lines. And now your summary is shorter, and I highly recommend you get this whole thing down to one page because you are probably applying for entry-level cyber roles and entry-level cybersecurity jobs are getting hundreds of resumes. Really? So one page, it, one page entry level jobs are going to get scanned real quickly. Um, so those are that's some of my overall overall advice. I don't know if it, I don't know if the person who submitted this is here. I don't know if Fabio is the real name. If you're still here and you have any questions, like go ahead and put them into the chat. I think this is the last resume that we have. So if you have any other specific questions, let me know in the chat. Or if anybody else has any other questions, I'll be here for seven more minutes. All right, while we wait for the questions to roll in, who do you like for the World Cup, John? Um, I have picked, I think Brazil's gonna go pretty far because I think Neymar is tired of being a meme. And I think if he can come on strong, they have a good chance. I mean, France has a good chance. France could field two full World Cup teams, probably. Um, England, I think, are actually a dark horse if he would let them score and actually put the goal scorers on the field. But he's like, he's like the Greg Berhalter of England. Like, he's so conservative and like, I, you, I don't know. Don't you don't you disparage Gareth Southgate on my watch? Uh, I I think. I think you're, I think you're, I agree. They're dark horse. I like Belgium. I think Belgium's going to go. I think it's going to be Belgium and Brazil if that's a possibility. Yeah, I don't know what side of the bracket everybody is on. Um, Germany, I never know what they're going to do because they've been very unpredictable the last couple of years. They have talent. Like they have talent. It's their coaches last year, probably. And then I think they're going to try to get Jurgen Klopp, uh, which will be sad for me. Um, I think those are the favorites. I think anybody else would be pretty much a surprise. Um, I will be thrilled if the U.S. can make it out of the group, but I kind of think maybe if we just crash all three games, we'll finally fire Greg and get a decent coach. Yeah. That's, so. that's, yeah. amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'll see any more questions rolling in. So, all right. Oh, there's one. Oh, we're talking about soccer. Okay. <laughs> I dig that. Nice. Yeah, right. I can't yeah. get into MLS too much. It's a me problem. I know it's a me problem. I I I, I kind of pay attention, but Kansas City didn't even make the playoffs, so um, they just had too many injuries. Hey, uh, I'm going to bounce. John, as Thanks always, forward. thank you so much for involving me and inviting me to participate and play Ranger games yeah. with you, and I appreciate everybody who joined us. You guys have a good All night. Right. Thanks, everyone. If yeah. there's other questions you have, Hit them up in the Discord. I'll probably be on a little bit tomorrow and or in the Slack then if you're not on the Slack already. Have a good evening. Yep. See you guys.